Well, as we've come to know in 2020, expect the unexpected. And that can certainly be said here today for this matchup between App State and Campbell. Hello, everyone. Harrison Battle, Stan Luter with you. And Stan, yesterday the Mountaineers finding out three active COVID cases on the team. Due to that, some injuries and some other factors. 20 players out here today for the Mountaineers. How do you see that changing the outlook of this game? Never more has it been expect the unexpected. So what you've got to do is adjust, and both teams will get an opportunity to put some players on the field that maybe we didn't anticipate seeing. It's time for them to step up. Both of these teams look at this as a very important ball game. Absolutely so, and the players we're going to see a lot of here in this matchup, the two quarterbacks, two great ones. Oh, man, Pre I really offensive enjoy player watching of the year. these two quarterbacks, yeah. too, because, you know, they are the preseason player of the year. We've got Haj Malik Williams. What does he do? Just a little bit of everything. He's young. He can make some plays with his legs as well as with his arm. He's what they call a dual-threat quarterback. Last year, he ran for nine touchdowns, threw for 17 and over 2,700 yards. What I like about him, he's very smart. He's going to get better and better as his career goes on. Remember the name, Haj Malik Williams. Near the other side, we know this name and we love this name if you're an App State fan, Zach Thomas. Here's the bottom line. He's a winner. Whatever he's got to do to win a football game for you, he's going to do that. And if Appalachian State expects to have great success, they're going to do it with this guy. Why? Because he's smart. He makes plays. He can throw the football. Over 2,700 yards thrown last year, 52 career touchdown passes. He's been a leader on the field and in the classroom. Zach Thomas, Oz Malik Williams, remember the names. Yeah, what more needs to be said to get you ready for kickoff? It's coming your way next. And there you see the head coach of the Campbell Camels, a familiar name to many in the North Carolina area and many pro football fans as well. That's Mike Mentor. You might remember him as the Nebraska great or maybe as the Carolina Panther, a great player that has now turned into a fantastic coach. And you see him getting his crew pumped up on the sidelines. And on the other side, first year head coach of Appalachian State, Sean Clark, spoke to Coach Clark yesterday and he said, hey, at this point, there's nothing you could do to surprise them. There could be a bear on the field. I mentioned maybe an alien invasion. He said, hey, nothing. The way that this season's gone thus far, they are ready for anything that comes their way. Mountaineer is going to kick off first as the Camels will receive. And this is normally the time you'd hear the crowd going crazy here at Kid Brewer Stadium, ready to see this one get underway. But we'll just imagine what you guys are doing in your living rooms back home, as it's great to see football again. Chandler Staten for the Mountaineers, the one that'll kick it away. 5'11", 190-pound senior from Gainesville, Georgia. And back to return for the Camels, Darion Slade and Jalen Kelsey. And we are underway on a Saturday. As this one's going to be brought out. And off to the side, the Mountaineers will wrap up as getting at that time was Malik Great. All right, so here comes the Camel offense. And Stan, this is a group that's 0-2. In fact, actually, most of the FCS is not playing football during the fall. Campbell is just one of 17 teams and one of two in the Big South. But Mike Minner looking at this as an incredible opportunity. Four FBS matchups, what they're going to play during this fall season with the Big South getting moved over to the spring for conference play. And let's see what they have in store here on the first play of the game. A little bit overthrown there on the first play and a good job in coverage there for the Mountaineers. This is and a, that was Ryan Huff. This is a, a, a 
explosive football team. They played two quality conference opponents for Appalachian State and Georgia Southern, losing to them by a point in Coastal Carolina. They can score. They're averaging about 29 points a ball game. You're going to see a lot of formations out of them, some to get Williams, a quarterback outside, some to stretch the field. Keep your eye on Jai Williams, number one, as a receiver. It's going to be a keep here for Haj Malik Williams, and the Mountaineers stop that before anything could get going. One of the things, if you're Appalachian State today, you want to do early, and they did it on that first possession, is to stop the run. This is a football team in Campbell that loves to run the football. They're averaging on their front line about 318, 320 pounds per man. They like to move you and move space. So it's going to be very important for Blackstock and Sperlin and Taylor and a whole lot of guys to be involved on plays. One of the first things the Mountaineer coaching staff said is this is a huge offensive line for the Camels. Off to the left is Williams. He's going long. Does he have a man? No, he does not. And a little bit surprised there to see on the first first few plays of the Camels opening drive them going long. Well, Williams took a little too long trying to get that ball there. The receiver was open about 15, 20 yards down. It beat the outside defender. He's got to get rid of that football a little quicker. But yeah, a little surprise maybe to see you back in your own territory and to throw the ball on two of the first three possessions should give Appalachian State good field position to start their first drive. Special teams, a bit of an adventure for the Camels this year. A lot of first-year players out there. And it's going to be McKay Taylor, the punter. And this is short as it's Thomas Hennigan that grabs it. And a great job there in special teams coverage by the Camels as coming over is Jeremiah Brown to go ahead and stop Thomas Hennigan. And if you're Appalachian State, there are, a lot, there are a lot of things that you've got to be concerned about. We were talking to both coaches this week. One of the things that Coach Clark was concerned about was the fact that they left a lot of opportunities on the field last Saturday in their loss to Marshall. They felt like they were out executed in all three phases of, of play. So I think you're going to see a very aggressive team. Three by, three by one formation on the first possession for the Mountaineers. The new look Appalachian State offense. Mountaineer fans, it's not what you expected to see this year. And it's going to be Thomas that's chased out of the pocket immediately and brought down in the back as getting over to him that time was Brevin Allen. And we talked about the offensive line at Campbell. Well, their front four and their bottom seven are also pretty quick. And Brevin Allen was a guy that had five sacks a season ago and is a quick to get off the football. Comes from the backside, is able to chase Thomas down, and that's a big defensive play to swing momentum early for Campbell. So a second and 20 here for the Mountaineers, and they're going to go to the ground, and nothing doing there as that's Daytrick Chop Harrington that's knocked down. The coaching staff saying, hey, we still got Chop out there. Confident that he can lead this rushing attack with Cam Peoples and Marcus Williams Jr. out of this one. And expect to see a lot of Harrington this afternoon. He's only carried the ball his maximum this year. has been 15 carries in their win against UNC Charlotte a couple of weeks ago. Expect to see him carry the ball 15 to 20, maybe even 25 times today. So third and 18 here for the Mountaineers as Thomas takes it off to the right, and he's going to try to run on his own. And he gets some yardage there, but the Mountaineers are going to have to punt this one away. Thomas does a good job reading the outside corner. He likes to keep the ball, get as much as you can. Don't turn it over. And again, play the field position thing if you have to. So now Xavier Sabach out there to punt it away for the Mountaineers. 6'1", 195 pound senior from Melbourne, Australia. And the lefty fires it off. The Camels wanting no part of this one, so the Mountaineers will down it. And the Camels will have offense again here in a moment. No score early on. You see the beautiful Sunbelt logo there, a little bit different here this season. Printed out there on the field. Also new turf out there on the field for the Mountaineers as App State here this season has had to make some adjustments with that turf out there. A little bit of a different look, but it sure does look beautiful. It does, doesn't it? It just looks good to see some people on the football field <laughs> right now. Isn't that the truth? Second drive. Let's see if they try to establish the ground game. They do, and DeMarco Jackson 
is the one that'll close it there. But with Campbell, you've got three guys that are their prominent running backs. Number one would be Williams, the quarterback. You want to try to limit the amount of times he has touches in this football game, possibly, but they don't mind him running the ball. Brant Barr, number four, you'll see is a dual threat guy, can catch the ball out of the backfield as well as run it. And then C.J. Freeman, number two. Don't forget about the freshman, McDowell, number 24. He'll get some quality touches today. So second and seven here for the Camels. They go to the outside, and that's going to be a first down as catching up with his tight end that time, Julian Hill. And Julian Hill, a big, big tight end, especially when you're talking about the FCS. 6'4", 245 pound really, junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Does a really good job getting to the outside. They use him in a variety of ways as an H-back. Sometimes it flicks him out. Good hands, five receptions already on the season. Came to Campbell from Fayetteville as a high school quarterback, was settled with some knee injuries, has gotten bigger, and they really feel like he's got a great upside that you might one day see him playing on Sundays. That kind of talent. First and 10 here for the Camels. And this is gonna be a keeper for Malik Williams as the Mountaineers will close that off, but some nice yardage there, and the ball's loose on the field. Let's see whether or not they say it was loose before he was down. Mountaineers trying to pull a fast one there on the officials early in this one, but well, nothing doing. One of the things I think you've got to do if you're Appalachian State is to try to force some turnovers, not getting the name of turnovers that you've seen in past. Again, we've only got two football games. They've been kind of crazy what you're doing, but the, the aggressive defense we haven't always seen making the big stop. Campbell's done a really good job this year of taking care of the football as this is rushed up the field. And that's going to be Brian Barr that gets the first down for the Camels. Yeah, Barr has the quickness to break plays to the outside, but doesn't mind going in between the tackles. And as we mentioned, Mike Edwards, number 75, the left tackle goes 345, only a sophomore. You also see McClellan at the right tackle, number 77, 68. 345 pounds. You can get a lot of yards between those two guys. That's for sure. That is a running back's dream. Malik Williams thinking about going to the outside, and he has a man. The Mountaineers stop that, though, as Caden Smith comes over and makes the tackle. And that'll be a gain of a couple. And we talked about it in the open, being a dual threat quarterback, that of Hodge Malik Williams. You saw an example of it there. Play was almost picked off. He almost had a great play by Sean Jolly that jumped the route. But then he had the footwork and the touch to throw it right over the outside defender and drop it in for a nice gain of about six or seven yards. So the Camels moving along here in their second offensive drive. And we're going to have a flag before this one gets going. And for the first time, we'll have a chance to here from our good friend Kyle Olson does so many of these Sun Belt games. You remember in the Charlotte game, one of the early possessions that kept a drive alive for North Carolina Charlotte. Earl was called offside to change the snap count. As quiet as it is here in the stadium. And now he does so, and the Camels just continue to mosey along the field. As that time, we're going to see the first catch by Jai Williams, redshirt sophomore. Watch Jai Williams roll him out, give him some time. Williams does a great job splitting the defenders. Knows he's going to get a hit, bobbles the ball a little bit, and then gets hit again, but leans forward. The leading receiver on this Camels football team, a speedster, a kid that transferred here after a couple of years. Uh, from Coastal Carolina, but he's a guy that can be a, an equate for this team. He can blow the defense, the head off the defense by his speed. So now it's going to be Malik Williams that wraps around and is going to be brought down on the play. But some nice yardage there on first down as that's going to make it second and one, and the Camels are in the red zone. Again, Haj Malik Williams, offensive line, holds their block. Breaks the first tackle, spin, solid tackle that time on the defensive side by Brandon Harrington, the kid from Northwood High School. So what do the Camels do inside the 20? They've struggled in this area thus far this year. In fact, speaking of the coaching staff, they believe they might have 
Had a much closer game against Coastal and maybe a win against Georgia Southern if they were better once they got inside that 20 yard line. A nice gain here on first down as that's gonna make it second and a few. The ability to mix up the run and the pass makes this Campbell football team very, very dangerous. And now if you're Appalachian, what you've got to make sure you do is you've got to get some guys involved that can take away that option. If, if that's what Williams wants to do, is his first look is going to be dive, second is going to be pitch or keep. You've got to put some pressure on him at the point of attack. Haj Malik Williams, just a sophomore, but you would not know it by watching him play. And they say it's night and day what he did last year to what he's doing thus far this year. Drops back in the pocket. Now he's going to look to run. And a great read there for the Mountaineers as coming up and throwing him down was Jordan Heilig, the inside linebacker. Good job by Heilig. That time playing basically a spy on him. Coverage was good for the defenders. Nowhere to go. You got a guy that keeps the football. Got to bring him down. It's a big tackle because he thought if he breaks it, he's going into the end zone. So time creeping down here in the first quarter as we have 6.45 and ticking. Second and seven for the Camels. Malik Williams will hand it off and Elijah Dirasuba right there to stop that. That's gonna make it third and five here for Campbell. And if they can help it until they get really close, the Camels don't wanna have to rely on that kicking game. Again, they've had some holding issues this year. A few extra points missed. The freshman does have the leg, a redshirt sophomore, excuse me, and Robert Brown, but well, if you want to go ahead and put points if, on the board. If you're Nick Grimes, you, you're thinking two plays here. You, you, you really do. You want to try to cash in on six if possible. Malik Williams scanning the field. He drops back. Now he's going to look to run, and twirling around and throwing him down will be the Mountaineers. Well, depending on the spot, I think that's yeah, it's going to be a fourth and a very, very short one. Well, Stan, I mean, I have to say you're a soothsayer because you asked this exact question to the well, Campbell coaching staff. What do you do on fourth and one? They run the ball at two of four on fourth downs, and they almost got the touchdown. He is close to the end zone, and they're going to stop him just short. But the Camels continuing to just stride along the field. Looking in great position here early on in this one. Not that it matters, you get bogged down on numbers, but 320 pound offensive line versus a 280 pound front. Malik Williams tries to stretch it. The Mountaineers are gonna stop him this time. Watch Williams reaches there just short. Inches short, and like you said, do you run behind this line? I think you do, you pound it inside. What does offensive coordinator Nick Grimes have up his sleeve? Defensive back late coming up to cover Williams at the top of your screen. They're going to keep it on the ground. They try the QB sneak, still waiting for the signal. A few Camels throwing up the touchdown, and it will be a touchdown. So Campbell, the first ones on the board here in Boone. Great execution of this drive by Campbell. Basically a no-brainer. You get the quarterback low, you get a running back low, and you just kind of wedge your way in and pick up that half yard. A very, very impressive drive on their second possession of the afternoon. For the Low burn to get them to the end zone. We mentioned the holding troubles here for the Camels. They get this one down, and that is good. So a 7-0 lead here for Campbell with 440 left in the first quarter. Just kind of find your way, find a gap, get inside and score. And on, the, on a nice sunny Saturday afternoon, the Camels are making the first noise. Seven nothing. Drive. The third rushing touchdown of the season for Haj Malik Williams is that was a 14 play, 83 yard, seven minute and 39 seconds off the play clock drive for the Campbell Camels to take the seven nothing lead over App State. Yeah, I know it's a long football game, but that's just typical of what Campbell would like to do. Long drives, wear the defensive front down for Appalachian State. Make sure you're converted on third down and cashing it in at the end. So the Mountaineers will see what they can do here on the kickoff return. That's Stephen Jones back to return. And he's off and running off to the right side. 
And he will be stopped short of the 20-yard line. So for Appalachian State now, the first drive last week against Marshall, and as your point of reference, Marshall goes down and scores. What does that do? They come back with a high-powered offense. They answer back, but then they go to the next five possessions of the half without scoring. In fact, they never scored again in the football game. They've got to find an effective, efficient offense right now. Again, if you weren't with us at the top, the Mountaineers have 20 players out today due to COVID-19, only three for that reason, but contact tracing, some injuries as well four coaching staff members out. So this is a shortened Mountaineer team and it's gonna be a handoff here to Daedric Harrington, a nice burst ahead. And that's a good look for the Mountaineers on first down. And we talked so much earlier on about the front line of Campbell, but the offensive line for Appalachian State led by Hannah number 60 and Bear 151 do a great job of finding holes, getting a body on a body. And then Harrington does an excellent job of reading his opening, getting there, running the daylight, getting enough for the first down. They might have some young guys out there, but they have a veteran offensive line and a veteran quarterback, and that's what you want. Harrington again with some great speed ahead and running off that right side. Back-to-back -back plays the Mountaineers with tremendous success. And you've never really been able to see all the time the burst of energy that this kid's had. He's had leg injuries the last two seasons, but you saw the speed right there in the 6'2 junior. Being able to find a hole, read it, and then respond appropriately. Two possessions, two plays, gets two first downs. Stan, if it's working, do you go away from it? No, but you play fake eventually, and you try to find Harrigan on a big play over the top. But right now, just keep running the ball. <laughs> and they're going to do just that off the right side. And Campbell is able to bring him down before he gets too many yards. But once again, a solid gain on first down, second and five. And we said he had 15 carries. was his high this year against Charlotte. I definitely think maybe before halftime he's going to have 15 <laughs> carries. You're going to run yeah. the football. You're going to ask your – you're going to go back if you're Appalachian State to what you do well, run the football, pound and pound. And when you get tired, pound some more. That is the identity of this team. And once again, Datrick Harrington with another first down as the Mountaineers are simply saying, if you can't stop it, then we're going to keep on going to it. <laughs> you dance with who brung you, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Unless they leave you and then maybe you go with somebody else. Yeah, you keep dancing. <laughs> Watch this patience gets inside. Boom. And see, now, now you've, you've loosened up. You've gotten some guys now in that front. So if you're at, this might be play fake. You got one on one on the outside. It is going to be an end around here. And the Mountaineers going away from the run up the gut for the first time have a negative yardage play there as that was Deshaun Davis, the redshirt freshman wide receiver that was tackled. You try to keep him off balance if you can. Good job of stringing the ball to the outside and the big time tackle that time. Again, these guys for, for Campbell can, can make some plays, especially Levi Wiggins is a presidential scholar and also a preseason all-conference performer with a big tackle. Mountaineer is going off the left side this time as that's the first look we've seen of Nate Noel, someone that the Mountaineer coaching staff absolutely loves, a freshman from Miami, Florida, 5'10", 175. Coach Peterson saying he's a little bit undersized, but man, is he electric, and he thinks after this game that the Mountaineers are going to have maybe a fourth running back that you look at and say that's a guy we'd really be willing to give the ball to a lot. Florida, Northwestern High School, you know one thing, he's got speed. They're going to go back to him, this time going off the left. And the Camel's ready for it. We have a late flag in. This may be a holding on the Mountaineers. The Camel's pointing over, saying it's on App State. Everybody huddled around. Our referee, Kyle Olson. Some of that conversation got Bear Hunter fi fired up, number 51. And that's what got him fired up. It is the other one on that infraction, Eli Wilson, the freshman tight end. Bear Hunter, a veteran player for this App State team. 
And one guy getting him low and the other guy engaging in a high block and then didn't get away. So you were getting a nice drive and then what happens? You, you, you the penalty, something something gets in the in the way of you having success. So if you're Appalachian, continue to go back to what, what you've been successful for in this immediate drive. Run the football, run the football, set the run up for the play fake in the, in the pass. So after a few first downs, the Mountaineers drive has now stalled as they sit in a third and 21 situation. Still Noel back behind Thomas and they're gonna hand it to him. Noel off the left side, he has some space. He got close, but I don't think that's going to be quite enough. Harrison, you have to be a versatile player in this man's football game and give a lot of credit that time to Hannigan. Noel's able to get to the outside because of a great block down the line of scrimmage made by number five, the senior from Greensboro. He's able to pop him out, and then he got fourth down. Appalachian State struggled on fourth down this season. This is a big for them. Mountaineers here fourth and four. Thomas going off to his left. He has a man, that's Deshaun Davis. And that is gonna be a first down for App State. The Mountaineers with some pumping of the fists after that one. Both of these coaching staff saying they were really proud of the way their teams have created their own energy without fans in the stands. Nice, easy route, short passing game. He needed four, give me about seven, get the first down, keep the chains moving. So as we tick towards the close of the first quarter here in Boone. Zach Thomas awaiting the ball here on first and 10. They go back to Harrington. He's off the left side this time and he is gonna be in the end zone. A high step along the sidelines. Dietrich Harrington gets the Mountaineers on the board. If you like running the football, if you like blocking at the point of attack, today can be your football game. A great answer for Appalachian State to the early Campbell touchdown. Give the ball to Harrington, let him do the work. A good block on the left side clears it. 17 yards later, Mountaineers on the board. That's going to be the seventh career touchdown for Datrick Harrington. It'll be the third here of the 2020 season. Now Chandler Staten out there to try to cash in the point after for the Mountaineers. The hold is good, the kick is up and through and we have a tie game 7-7 with 11 seconds left here in the first quarter. Take a look at that left side of the line. This is like in the backyard back in the day. Two-hand football, two-hand tag. Nobody ever lays a hand on Harrington. 7-7, seven, seven. Mountaineers, Camels, coming back for more. Well, just getting the word a moment ago that the previous play is under review. So Kyle Olson, the referee, and his crew are going to get together and try to figure things out here. Any idea what this might be about, Stan? Unless they were unable to buzz down after the touchdown. And Harrington did tightrope the sideline, but I thought, you know, he was in. It looked good from this distance. We'll just have to wait and see. And there was a little bit of time. Yeah, was, yeah that's that what I'm saying. Point, I, I couldn't so. understand why it would take that long to get that communication down was it the timing mechanism or maybe well as it stands right wait. now that was a 10 play 82 yard drive for the Mountaineers four minutes and 22 seconds off the clock and ended in a 17 yard rushing touchdown for Datrick Harrington This could have been on the PAT. And I'm looking at the replay there. It could have been the center was covered in your attempt to block the kick. Everyone can be covered except the center. Another one of the safety measurements. Well, a long so, discussion here trying to figure this yeah. one out. And folks right now having some technical difficulties with our graphics, so we'll try to give you the down and distance 
as much as possible, but that's the reason that's not up on your screen currently. But that was a very, very impressive drive. And as we said, as they took possession of the football, they needed to come out and, and be aggressive and, and put some points on the board. That was only the second touchdown they've scored in the first quarter this season. Very impressive drive by Appalachian State, and we'll wait for the officials. They're still talking about this. Yeah, I thought he was going to come out and have the call, but it looks like a little bit more discussion, and now it looks like we'll have it. Well, maybe. Uniform numbers, maybe. I mean, it's a spitz. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, after all that, yeah, uniform, numbers. A uniform numbers issue, and the Mountaineers will have to try the point after once again. And a new addendum to the rules this year, you can't have guys with multiple numbers, but they cannot be on the field at the same time. Now, it used to be you could have the beanie and pull over the little sleeve, whatnot, no more. So, they, you know, it's, it's again, communication. Under the situations we're in now with COVID and players not playing, guys are in, it's everything, the excitement. You've got to have great communication. So this makes this a little more difficult. Okay, and they're going back to the previous play being under video review. you got to count all the numbers. you got to count all the uniforms. All right. 2020 football, folks. <laughs> I don't really, I can't really know what else to say. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. Right in the middle of the play, you see there's a two 91s. If you'll count from left to right, 70, 91, 31, 91 again. You can't have two. <laughs> you can't have two. Most of the time, having two isn't as bad. Okay, and we have another revision to this year as <laughs> I'm wondering when well, the next time we the might ball. see a play on the field is. So then they got everything out of the house keeping good. Can't have two numbers on, this, on the field at the same time on the same team. Five yard penalty, back it up there, and we'll try to point after one more time. All right, so talk about icing the kicker. Once again, it is up from Staten. And once again, the Mountaineers get their seventh point. They had to work hard for that seventh Man, point. that was the hardest working point I've seen this season. But they got it. We got a tie ball game. And now let's see what adjustments are going to be made defensively by the Mountaineers. More pressure on Taj Malik Williams. Does he now try to throw the football a little bit? Is he very confident he can continue to run the football? The Camels said coming in, and this is, of course, prior to all the Mountaineers that are out and the things that we found out yesterday. But they said coming in that they felt like they would know where they stood after the first quarter. And a lot of times in these FBS, FCS games, as Mountaineer fans will sure remember, that is what has a lot of say on the game is how you do in the first quarter. And it looks like, barring maybe a return here or something big happening in this last 11 seconds, we're going to head to the second quarter with a tie game. Well, this is a building block quarter is a building block game it's a building block season for Campbell University as we've mentioned earlier only playing four football games all of them against big time opponents two of which have been in this conference so they want to see where they stack up to be able to make adjustments to continue to play they're not here just to be here they're here to win this football game but they also want to learn a lot from the season let's see whether or not they decide Ooh, that's to bring a big mistake time Wow. They're going to say it's a touchback, and maybe, hopefully, he called a fair catch and then tried to continue out the play. If that's the case, the ball will be out of the 25. If not, that was a big-time kick return mistake by, by Great. So what you're saying is you'd like for them to review that? No, no, <laughs> because, because what we couldn't see or don't see, but did someone indicate 
was it an indication of a fair catch? And you yeah. might have just, okay, it's a fair catch. Let me just try to go ahead and make the play anyway. And apparently that's what happened. No, we don't need a replay right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've been hanging on 11 seconds for a long time. Oh, gosh. All right. So 11 seconds left here in the first quarter. First and 10 for the Camels. It's been a while since we've seen Haj Malik Williams back out there on the field. That's where he sits right now. Drops back, goes over to his right. And this will be a successful play as they'll gain a few that time. Quick hitter that time. Again, another one of the good receivers slash tight ends that they have, Austin Height. Gets rid of the football very quickly as Malik Williams. And what the other thing that you want to be able to do if you're Campbell is to be able to make something happen well on first down. That was a big play of about five. The end of the first quarter here in Boone, we have a tie game. Well, you hate to see it under any circumstance. The Camels with an injured player here as on the last play, a Camel went down. I think that was a receiver on that play, Height. Kid that uh, transferred here from Monmouth and very frustrated. You make a play and then you get injured, may not be back. A handoff here off to the right side. Mountaineers close that down before much can be gained. another look there at the quick out the height comes inside and then bam that's the big time hit that you've got to ask your linebackers to make Tyler Bird and then you see height kind of holding that left arm and didn't look good going off the field but a big time hit by Bird third and one here for the Camels just underway in the second quarter Hajj Malik Williams with another handoff and that's going to be a first down for Campbell as that's Brian Barr that got it for him. Line the game was the 35. And there's the frustration. You don't even have to put words to that. You see it, you know, frustrated. Been working all week to try to play. You're playing against App State, a big hit. You make a play, big hit. And now, unfortunately, height may be done for the ball game. Campbell trying to get everybody in position here pre-snap, a fake handoff, and Haj Malik Williams going over the top once again. Does he have a man? Yes, he does, as the Campbell Camels just continue to churn up the field. That is going to be Jalen Kelsey, I believe, that made the catch And this time. is what you have to concern yourself with. You're so concerned with the run, stopping the run, a perfectly thrown ball over the shoulder to Kelsey, the leading receiver on this Camel football team, a big play. And again, just when you think you've got him stopped on the ground, Kevin Kelsey comes up with a big play from Haj Malik Williams. Going back to the ground this time, it's Barr off the right side. And the Mountaineers shut that down. Kelsey, a player that the Camels really wanted to be in that uniform. They actually sent almost their entire coaching staff down to recruit him in Gainesville, Florida. He has a pretty impressive lineage as well. Older brother Keith Kelsey Jr., current member of the Steelers, and also his father, Keith Kelsey Jr., a linebacker for Florida back in 1996. So second and seven here for Campbell. As they're on the other side of the 50-yard line, marching towards the end zone. A fake handoff here, a paw on it that time, and the ball comes loose as that was nice coverage for the Mountaineers, Tyler Bird. Good job by Bird that time. You've recognized the play, fake drops in your gap and get your hand. He's been very active, a big hit a moment ago. And then watch this, drops in coverage and nearly was able to get the interception. Kind of try to trick Williams that time, dropping that linebacker. Campbell on the six and has had some success on their third down plays. Over the year, they're in 
17 to 32, 53 percent from third down. This would be a huge one to keep a drive going. Third and seven right here. Hajmalik Williams off to the left. Will he use the legs? He's still running around. This is where he's dangerous, and he's going to get the first down as he pushes the ball forward. And that is what's so impressive about this sophomore quarterback. He can always scramble, and he can always find a way. Legs, athleticism. You think you've got him him dim. No one open. Keep the play alive with your legs, and your vision doesn't force anything. Cuts back against the grain. Gets enough for the first down. Keeps the drive moving. Haj Malik Williams. Back to the ground quickly they go as that was C.J. Freeman getting the ball that time. Malik Williams had, had set, you know, was number seven in the conference last year with nine rushing touchdowns. Again, that dual threat, the guy that can make plays on the ground as well as in the air, rushed for over 600 yards and is really becoming a, a problem for defensive coordinators. How do we defend him? Do we take away the run? He's got a nice arm. You take away the arm, make him run. You don't want to do that. Second and five for the Camels. He turns around, going off to the right side. Mountaineers have pressure, looking for the back of the end zone, and that is incomplete. Yeah, you're talking about Kelsey having a great athletic lineage. That time doesn't watch this one in. Would have been six, but a little nuance with the footwork of the quarterback. You watch Williams out of the pocket that time, makes a little spin. That gives the defenders another way to try to try to attack him. He thinks he, they think he's going right. He goes back left, and you got a wide open receiver in the back of the end zone, not able to bring the ball in for the touchdown. Big South freshman of the year a year ago. This year, the preseason offensive player of the year and the Big South Conference. And this play is going to get blown dead before anything gets going. I think Mike Edwards, 75. Watch, you see the spin out that time? Gives him just enough room, and wow. That's very similar to the play at the end of the game against uh, Georgia Southern, where Hill, you know, Hill that time was open, but Williams had to get rid of the ball maybe a second sooner than he wanted to, unable to pull off the upset in that game. So now we're going to have a third and 10, and let's see what this App State defense can do. Mountaineer is led by Dale Jones, longtime App State coach back this season. Haj Malik Williams has his eyes for the end zone, and he puts the ball across as Campbell is not wow. going anywhere yet. They put some more points up on the board. Harrison, watch the move. When we get the replay, watch the move that Williams makes in the open field against Bird. Bird's been very active. Got one big hit, gets a deflection, but not that time. Haj Malik Williams. I keep saying the name because I want you to remember it. He's making plays. So now the point after for the Camels. Robert Brown back out there. They get the hold down. And that is going to be no good. And for Campbell this year, that's now going to be the fourth missed extra point. And once again, you saw watch, it was the hold that time. Watch Williams that time. Just makes a little fake. Low snap. They've had trouble with special teams. Not able to get the point. But right now, it's the Hosmer League Sh Williams show. Campbell, 13. App State, 7. Well, you see a look at the Campbell sidelines there as it looks like we might see Austin Height back in this game. He has his gear back on, and that would certainly be a good sign for this Campbell crew. They have the 13-7 lead over App State, a low snap on the extra point, the reason that they don't have 14 up on the board. And this time we're going to see a shorter kick as Stephen Jones gathers, rushes ahead, trying to find some space, and that's a great return there. Stephen Jones, a great special teams player for App State, has had a much bigger role on defense this year, but a player that just gets better and better. Good. Short kick, try to cover it. Jones does a nice job avoiding the first tackler, pushes forward. And that's nice field position for Appalachian State on their third drive. Again, now having to answer back after the very impressive second drive, third drive, I should say, and second touchdown for the Campbells of Campbell. So first and 10 here for the Mountaineers. 
as this will be their first drive here in the second quarter. App State heavy on the ground attack, last drive, and this time they're going to go right back to it as just bumbling off of a defender there. That's going to be Daytrick Harrington as he's brought down on the play by Joshua Johnson, the 6'5 defensive lineman. Good vision that time. Again, a nice block again by Bear Hunter, 51. Hannah, number 60, gives you enough room. And again, being able to make positive plays on first down really helps you out as an offensive play call. Tony Peterson can do a lot of things now a second and short. Dietrich Harrington back with the ball, twirls around, and he's stopped here. As that was second and three for the Mountaineers, and no yardage gained. It'll now be third and three. A great job by Jonathan Jones to get initial contact on Harrington. Then he got a host of white shirts to come in and finish the play. And now, Appalachian faced in their territory with a third down situation, third down and about three yards to go. Showing blitz. Thomas going over the top, has a man, and that is a successful catch as App State getting a new receiver involved. That's Jake Henry, the junior from Florida. A good recognition that time by Thomas. He's a senior. He's seen it all. Campbell comes with a blitz up the middle, so you know you've got one-on-one -on -one to the outside. You've got to get rid of the football quickly. He does a great job staying low, throwing to the target, gets the first down. So first and ten here for the Mountaineers. They hand it off again to Harrington off the right side, and he jumps over a few Camel tacklers to get some nice yardage, and that'll be close to another first down. And if, you, again, you've had success running the football if you're Appalachian State, you mix the pass in on short yardage, something that's going to be a safe, you know that you've got a quarterback that's not going to make a lot of mistakes, and then you get to the offense again. What are we talk about? You want to run the ball, throw when you want to. Right now it's nice, second down one. Second and one for App State. Mountaineers just across midfield as they go back to the ground and Harrington will have the first down. The offensive line trying to get him a few more yards. Let's see, Daytrick Harrington already in this game with 10 carries. So, so, yeah, you're so right. you He's feel, you feel, up towards that 15. You feel kind of comfortable with my 15 by the end of the half? <laughs> That's oh, a big, man. you know, we talked about the offensive line of, of Campbell. The offensive line of Appalachian State's not a small group of young men either. They're averaging about 290 pounds per man. Mountaineers going back to the ground, but this time it's the lightning as that's Nate Noel off the left side. And the Camels after a nice gain. Go ahead and stop him. And one thing you can say about this game thus far, Stan, is that the Mountaineers are sticking to that ground attack, doing a very nice job of what's working. They're just going ahead and continuing to use it to their advantage. Don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but last season, as an indicator, Appalachian ran the ball 35 times or more in 13 of the 14 football games they won. You got a feeling that today and throughout the season, the run game is going to be about that heavy, heavy, heavy. Thomas with another handoff. Noel slips a tackler. Ahead he goes, and that'll be another first down for App State as the ground game is really working. And one thing the coaching staff talked about all week and certainly yesterday after finding out about the injury news is that they have a veteran quarterback and a veteran offensive line to lead these young guys, and it's showing right now. Noel still in the game here for the Mountaineers. And they're going to go back to him on first and 10. A stutter step, and Campbell stops him at the line of scrimmage. Good inside rush that time. Chris Cromarty, 99. Gabe Holmes, 98. The interior of the line, very solid for, for this Campbell team. J.C. Smith, the strong safety, will come up and make some plays as well. They don't mind hitting you. But again, it's going to be, it's, it's really going to be aggression versus aggression. Which offensive line can control the line of scrimmage? And are you able to be a solid tackler? Nate Noel, six attempts for 44 yards. And he's putting a place in the black and gold fans' hearts thus far. Deshaun Davis on the outside with a nice catch. 
That'll be close to another first down, and App nice. State starting to find their rhythm. Nice, easy route. Again, a little scissors route. You send the outside guy in. You send Davis in the flat and just try to get up. Quick drop by Thomas and aggressively hits Davis. Now what you're doing is you loosen up those linebackers a little bit, and you can continue to go pound inside. Mountaineer is on the left hash here, sitting in a third and two situation. Thomas goes up to his O-line, figures out what he wants to do, and now he'll run it off the left. A pitch over to Harrington. That's a first down, and he's pushed out of bounds. Great play design that time by offensive coordinator Tony Peterson. Great job that time, reading what you had. You had more to your outside. One guy less, make the pitch. Could have very easily been called with a late hit, clearly in the yellow, in the gold. No flag that time, but again, I like the aggressiveness that you're seeing out of Appalachia. You're mixing the run in the pass. That time you came an option on the short side. First and 10 here for the Mountaineers. Harrington back behind Thomas. Thomas looking to his right. He's going to have a fade in the end zone. Thomas Hennigan, and the ball's loose, as that is fantastic coverage over there as the Camels coming over and making the play. That was Malik Great. And he had one-on-one -on -one coverage to the outside. And again, it was a similar route that we saw a moment ago, a little crossing route with the wide receivers. And you had Hennigan one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, no. Is that Hennigan that that's down? Yeah, it is, it is Hennigan who's down. And one of the top receivers in the country. Don't want to see him down. No, that's the guy the Mountaineers can't afford to lose. Back with you in a moment. A sigh of relief, we believe here, Mountaineer fans, as Thomas Hennigan got up and ran towards the Mountaineer sidelines. They are still looking at him, but believe he's going to be okay. And, and Stan, let's take a look back at this one. Nice floater. Does he bring it down? Doesn't have it. Yeah, you see, he's kind of juggling. It's a good call. And then he goes down hard on that left shoulder. And you're talking about a guy that has caught at least five passes in 12 football games throughout his career has had an outstanding career, one of the top 10 receivers in Appalachian school history, and continues to get better and better and better. A lot of people quote him as having the best hands in the Sun Belt Conference. I don't doubt that at all. He gets another opportunity, he'll make the play. Third and nine for the Mountaineers. A pitch to the outside, tough catch here, and Harrington's out of bounds. We have a flag on the play, though. I think you're gonna get Cole Garrison, 73, kind of reaching out there, trying to make that block and get a hole. So it'll be interesting to see on third down and long, will Campbell decline that, or will they accept the penalty and make it even third and even longer? And you were, we were talking about the, the field goals. You know, Appalachian has had some trouble kicking this year as well. 0-2 from field goal, one block, one miss. Whoa. Wow. Didn't see the target because of the hole. Wait a minute now. <laughs> That's on Joshua Johnson. Did he say number one? I thought. So you talk about a big turn of events of what we thought was going to happen versus what's actually happening. Now, Nears would have been in a fourth and nine situation, actually, yeah. probably even longer, longer than, than that. that after the penalty. And now we're going to see. A targeting play that could put App State with even better field position and possibly have one of the strong players for the Camels out of this and game. This was away from the football, I think, away from the action. And you may have gotten Johnson targeting, hitting late uh, uh, Zach Thomas. So a lot of things were going on on that play. And let's see, see if we can take a look. Let's keep your eye on, on Thomas. Okay, there's the hit. Looks like he got him in the chest but he did lead with his head a little bit. We'll see how they interpret that. Play that they ran similar a few minutes ago to, to, to Noel, a little short option. On the boundary side, able to get the first down that time, a good defensive play by Campbell, but it may be all for naught. Well, there has been a lot of work for the replay booth here busy. in this one thus far. They have been busy.
All right, so they say the targeting penalty Hit. is confirmed, but I didn't hear anything about Johnson being out of this game. Yes, they're, they're talking about. Nonetheless, the Mountaineers have the ball on the five yard line and have a first and five for the end zone. Thomas awaiting the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Harrington off the right side. And the Camels defensive line slows that down. Considering the fact that Campbell played against Georgia Southern, one of the best run teams in the country, only giving up about 170 yards on the ground throughout the season. Conversely, you look at Appalachian rushing the ball so far this year, four touchdowns on the ground going into the day, now five for about 202, 203 yards. So again, it's power versus power, and you gotta feel good if you're a Mountaineer fan, they can cash this in. Second and five here for App State. Mountaineers with a few extra offensive linemen out there. They're going to go back to Harrington. And once again, standing up is that defensive line for the Camels. Brought Trevor Willard in, number 96. <laughs> Willard, Willard goes about 225 at 6'3 D line. Just kind of bring him over as an added extra lineman and try to run away from that strength. We're back where we were a few minutes ago. So a third and four here for App State. 4.06 and ticking in the second quarter. Mountaineers down 13-7 here in Boone. And this bunch formation sets, you look for that inside receiver. You kind of keep your eye on Hennigan. Would be considered in the slot right now. And we're gonna have a timeout down on the field. And that's gonna bring us to another break. Crucial situation here in this matchup, App State. Four yards to go for the end zone. What do the Mountaineers have in store here? A third and four. You've got man on both sides and trying to kind of hedge a little bit at the top of your screen with Hennigan. So he's going to get the double coverage with the help. App State fans thrilled to see Thomas Hennigan back out there on the field. Brandon Wilson is a tight. It's a lead back right here. There you go. Mountaineers going off the right side. Dietrich Harrington stopped short, but a late flag comes in. I believe that'll be about a fourth and two, but we'll wait and see what this flag is. It's a hold, I know that. Uh, apparently on Mountaineers. You know, and th this goes ha Harrison back to what, what the coaches were talking about this yeah. week, about execution, that you're just not sharp, you're not making plays. You know, you're having a mistake in the red zone too many times. Five, five out of ten scoring this season for Appalachian in the red zone, five of them being touchdowns. But you think back to the fumble, you know, in the game last week. You think about the fumble at the goal line against Charlotte. Now, you know, some a missed field goal. It's not smooth when you get inside the 20-yard line. Now a hole pushes you back ten. So a fourth and two turns into a third and 15 here for the Mountaineers. Dropping back is Thomas. He's looking for the end zone. And the Camels say that that is an incomplete pass as he was looking for Thomas Hennigan that time. So the Mountaineers will have to send the field goal unit out. And they like this matchup again. You're in one on one. Your best defensive back against your best receiver. Great versus Hennigan. Turns back at the right time. You see him bobble it. And you saw the ball one more time. You see those laces. The ball was out of bounds as he was out of bounds. Didn't have control. Remember, you only have to have one foot in in college football. Hennigan wasn't able to do that. So Campbell's able to stop Appalachian State inside the red zone for a touchdown. 
And they're going to go ahead look and at that review again. it After anyways. we just told them it was incomplete, I don't know. <laughs> You'd think they have you in their earpiece, Stan. Well, I could be wrong. I mean, you know, but we'll see. Hennigan didn't seem to be convinced that he caught it, and that's normally what I look for as the way that you can tell. We're going to go ahead and give you a second look here once we see Kyle Olson put that headset on and take a look at it again. Well, let's see, does he maintain control right there? But see, boom, one foot there, and the ball looks like it's moving just a little bit. Take a look again. See, kind of like he had a double catch the football. Then he doesn't come to the ground with it. So we'll see what they say. <laughs> I gave up my stripes a long time ago. <laughs> I never had them. So at least you got yours at some point. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't say where I had them. Well, the Mountaineers still have the kicking team out there. Talk about waiting. Chandler Staten has had some waiting to do out on the field in this game. Yeah. Some unintentional icing. Ball, see, 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 he doesn't get it. See, that's a good look right there. Good job in the truck, guys. Thank you very much. That's an e basically for us, it was an easy call. So this is going to be a 32-yard field goal try for Chandler Staten. Now near sitting with a fourth and 15 here. The kick is up and through, and the Mountaineers put some more points on the board as that'll turn this into a 13-10 game. And Stan, we heard all week long from the offensive coordinator for App State, Tony Peterson, about how the biggest problems this team was having were turnovers and penalties. And already here in this game, we've seen the penalties especially have a major role with the Mountaineers having some situations where they could have been a little bit closer and instead a costly penalty pushes them back. But nonetheless, still a one-score game. You think about it, it's a, a holding penalty pushes you back 10, then you have the incomplete pass. You've got a fourth and about three. You've got to think with the success that they've had, they would try to cash that in for six. Not able to get that. You get three points, but you cannot leave. And they talked about this not only in the game last Saturday against Marshall, which is a very, very good team, but against North Carolina Charlotte as well, where they left points on the field. And sometimes in many games, those things come back to haunt you. If you're Appalachian State, you want to see the ball in the end zone. So the Mountaineers will get ready to boom this one away, looking for one more defensive stop before we head to halftime, or maybe a quick defensive stop and getting the ball back. The Camels may be looking to add some more points on the board. And Campbell's not even going to think about bringing this out. They have three minutes and 22 seconds to work here, so let's find out what this sophomore Haj Malik Williams has in store with not much time left here in the second quarter. Now you've been able to score with impressive over five minute drives if you're Campbell. Another drive very much like that gets you to the half. Remember, Appalachian State kicked to begin the football game, so they'll receive the second half kickoff. So very important for them defensively. Try to get Campbell off the field, maybe score, and then get the football back. They're going to go on the ground here to begin. App State closes that down. Good news to report, Austin Height is back in this game for the Camels. So after the frustration and the helmet throw over on the sideline after a possible injury, it looks like he's okay and will be able to go back to work for his crew. And now you get Campbell off balance because you're not able to pick up anything of substantial gain on first down. So now you're faced with a second and long. It makes your play calling a little different, especially when you're backed up behind your own 30-yard line. Second and 10 here for the Camels. And we're going to have a flag on the field. Reset. 
So an illegal procedure is going to be the call that time, and the Camels will have to go ahead and back up a few yards. That'll make this a second and 15. So I'm Nick Grimes now. Do, do you want to risk putting the ball in the air? Incompletion stops the clock, gives Campbell possibly, I mean, gives Appalachian possibly more time to get the ball. It could be an intercepted. You could hit the big play. You want to be smart yet conservative, I think, if you're on this. There we go. They're going to hand it off once again, trying to find some sort of space as Barr. And Caden Smith and company make sure that's not possible. Nice job by Ryan Huff. Pursue the play, kind of stops Smith, makes him kind of bobble the football. Then he gets help from the outside. App State decides to use a timeout. They want to get the football with some time and in decent field position. I got to say, I'm a little bit surprised with that call on first down from Campbell. They'd had some success in the air, maybe looking to at least get the ball further down the field. But going with the run on back-to-back -back plays, and you're kind of forced to after that penalty that pushed them yeah, back. But now they sit here in a third and 10 situation, 221 left. You got a veteran quarterback in Zach Thomas that's been in a lot of two minute drills, kind of changes things up. Well, that's why the first down play was so very important for, for Campbell because you, you get first down, you get second in about five or six, you're able to maybe say, okay, we can risk the pass. We can do a little, a few more things but keep the clock moving, try to advance the football. Now you're backed up in a third down and long situation. The thing you don't want to do if you're a quarterback, Williams, you don't want to take a sack. You don't want to throw an incomplete, an, an interception. Well, let's see if, if Appalachian, with that in mind, tries to bring an extra man in the box. But you've got good wide receivers for Campbell, especially the guy we haven't really talked a lot about, number one, Jai Williams, at the top of your screen. So 2.21 left here, rolling off the right side is Haj Malik Williams, and that ball's loose. The Mountaineers diving after it. They have it, and they're going to say that's an incomplete pass. Well, if it's an incomplete pass, it might be careful. It could be an intentional grounding. Mm. Either way, that's not. I see a flag down. I think they're going to get intentional grounding on Williams, but what we say, you don't want to force a turnover. You don't want to make a mistake down there. This could be a big defensive play for 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 Appalachian. And again, we've told you about the young players for this Camel team. And one of those, of course, being the punter, McKay Taylor, the redshirt sophomore, in just his first year as the primary punter for the Camels. He's going to be in a Situation that's not enviable right here. Let's see what the Mountaineers send at him. And of course, you have Thomas Hennigan back to return the punt that can make some magic in his own right. So on fourth and 18 here with 2.11 left in the second quarter. Campbell up 13 to 10 on App State. We're going to see a punt. He gets it off, and that's about as good as you could ask for. But Thomas Hennigan is going to get a few yards and then be spun around and thrown down. Dangerous play. Catch the ball in the bounce, able to pick up about seven yards. But with you know, a minute and 59 seconds and a couple of timeouts remaining, Appalachian State's got to feel good about where they are position-wise and getting more points on the board. Remember, Get the ball back to begin the second half. So this is going to be a big stand. As, as important as this is, I think, for Appalachian offensively, I think you could say the same defensively for Campbell. They've done a good job in putting the Appalachian in some long yard situations, but now more field to use. And you got to feel like, again, that matchup that I'm looking at the bottom of the screen, a one-on-one -on -one matchup against Great with Hennigan is important. Off the left side here to Daytrick Harrington, and he's thrown down. A minute 52 and ticking here before halftime. Run the stretch, try to see if you can bounce something to the outside. Harrington's had a very, very impressive first half with carries. App State has just one timeout left here as again they hand it off to Harrington, and this time he has some space. Daytrick Harrington pushed out of bounds, a flag is down on the field though. He 
Kyle Olsen's voice has to be getting hoarse. Appalachian walking back. They got to feel it's going to be on them. It's really a hold. Those drive killers. And Noah Hannon, I think, is what I heard the officials say, caught with his hand in a cookie jar. But again, you pick up 14, 15 yards that time by, by Harrington. You get some momentum. And once again, you, you shoot yourself in the foot. A minute 43 left here in the second quarter. It's going to be a second and 16 for App State. And, it, and it's very, it gets very frustrating for you as a team because you're making the plays, you're making the blocks, you're executing, but you're not finishing. One of the keys in this football game today, finish all plays. Another handoff here to Harrington. Some hands on him at the line of scrimmage and they're just gonna rush him out of bounds. Maybe gained a yard or two on that play. The defensive backs for Campbell close very well. They're very quick getting to the football. You saw a little love tap at the end of the play by Malik Great. You know, he talked about Great a moment ago. You know, it was a transfer from Wake Forest. Has had some solid football games for this Campbell football team. And again, now facing a long yard, third long situation. This is when Campbell's had a lot of success. But keep in mind, they only had one sack so far in the season. Third and 12 for App State. Mountaineers looking for the sticks. And the pass is complete to Jake Henry. So on third down, Thomas has the magic to move the drive along for App State. Henry does a great job of running a route. He had a soft corner that time. Defensive back off a little bit. Thomas recognizes the great runs. An excellent route, comes back, gets the catch, and the first down. He goes off the left side this time. That's Deshaun Davis trying to find some room to operate. And just short of that first down marker, he's thrown down. And those passes like that are just like long handoffs to try to get guys in the open field, maybe see if he can break a tackle, get, get to the outside. It's a nice pass. It picks up nine yards. And now you've got, you've got Campbell scrambling. Appalachian looks like they're running offensive efficient. A minute six and ticking as this time the Mountaineers go back to the run. And that's going to be a first down. So first and ten for App State now. A minute solid up on the scoreboard. Thomas quickly trying to get his guys lined up. Clock running, 55 seconds remaining, first half. Thomas looking deep. He goes off to the right side and not being able to turn around is Henry that time. A pass just a little bit out of his reach. That pass was a little bit behind him, but if you take a look, Deshaun Davis was running a bit of a seam route right over the middle, was wide open. This ball just a little late recognizing Henry not able to make that catch. Something you can keep in your mind for later on in this football game, running the same combo. 46 seconds left, second and 10 here for App State. Second quarter, it's the outside. Deshaun Davis bumps off a defender and slides out of bounds. So 40 seconds left here. This is going to put the Mountaineers with a third and five situation. Campbell up 13 to 10. Mountaineers have officially reached the Camel red zone with the ball sitting at the 20-yard line. Thomas looking to the left the entire time. He has a man on the outside. That's Thomas Hennigan, and Hennigan dancing along the sideline, thrown out of bounds. That was close to being a ball that the Camels got their hands on. Instead, it turns into a huge gain, and now a first and two. Excellent possession receivers in again. Defensive back just about a half step too late, but nearly could have been picked off. Perfect pass to the outside. Only one person could get that. That's going to be Hennigan. Appalachian can cash in. Still plenty of time and one timeout remaining. No need right now to hurry. Be efficient. Little diamond, diamond formation right now. You can power this. 33 seconds left here, and that's going to be a timeout on the field. The Camels have one timeout left after that one taken. And yeah, pretty big situation here. If the Mountaineers can get a touchdown, they'll go ahead and take the lead. If the Camels can 
either have a missed field goal or just a field goal that would make it a tie game. So App State trying to find the way to get in the end zone and the Camels trying to find a way to either go into halftime with a tie game or a lead. Stan, a really impressive drive right here for App State as they found the right plays in the right times to go ahead and continue moving the ball along the field, and that has a lot well, to do with the Well, you're establishing the players. run game. You're able to get the run game going, and when you can do that, that opens up the quick hitters on the outside. You've seen Davis highly involved right now, picking up six, seven, eight, nine yards, Hennigan doing what he does. This is that diamond formation. You can go inside, dive, you can go power, you can make pass. They fake the handoff. Thomas has oh. it dropped as that was an excellent opportunity for a touchdown by Eli Wilson, the freshman from Piedmont, South Carolina. When but you just look at the, the tape bones. later tonight or in the morning, he's going to say, man, that's the one that got away. Just never watches this ball in his hands. He's in the end zone. All he's got to do is catch it. Nice pass. Hit him in the worst place possible in his hands. Second and two, 28 seconds left here before halftime. Thomas goes back to the ground, and Datrick Harrington is back in the end zone as App State gets their first lead of the day. They use that power back inside, gets a back tight end block, goes follows the lead, a good offensive surge, touchdown Mountaineers. So that is a huge drive for App State to presumably head into halftime with the lead here. The Mountaineers just doing what they do. A little bit of run, a little bit of pass. And they find themselves with the 16-13 lead. The point after try here from Chandler Staten is up and through. And that makes it 17-13 App State with 24 seconds left here before halftime. Good. Great surge getting off the ball. Hunter gets a kick out block for the tight. Follows that. Anybody could have got in the end zone with that great block. And how about that, Harrison? No, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. Might, might have stumbled at the one. But Harrington, who's had a very impressive first half, gets his second touchdown in the afternoon and has looked very, very solid in his play. And he makes you look like a smart man. Datrick Harrington, 18 attempts, 107 yards in the first half, and two touchdowns to boot, a 5.9 average. Mountaineers 11 plays, 51 yards, just a minute 35 off the clock there in that touchdown drive. So the Camels were very conservative when they had the ball last. And unless you get this ball to plus 30, 35, I think it's just Quarterback keeper, let's get in the half. You've, you've had a very solid half of football for Campbell. Staten flies it away. And this will be brought out. A stumble, though, and that's the old turf monster. No, he threw a shoe. Oh, wow. He threw a shoe. Well, lucky he has a teammate to go and pick it up for him. Don't want to well, lose one of those. That's, that's you know what, you know, that one hump, two hump Campbell. He lost one of his humps. This is, you know, how, how rarely do you see this? Watch this. There's a return, makes his first step, and bam, he loses a shoe. Wow. We were talking about the turn wow. earlier. Maybe that's a no, technical that's, difficulty no, on the that, shoe tying. That's, that's, that's <laughs> one, two, three, tie your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> the Camels go right. with a run here. And that's going to be slowed down. And now 16 seconds left before we head to halftime. Probably for Campbell, don't even try to run another play. And it looks like they're just going to let the clock go ahead and run down. Five, four. And now we sit at halftime here in Boone. A good half of football. App State up 17-13. Hey, we have the athletic director, Doug Gillen, coming your way next. Now let's go ahead and take a look back at the first half highlights. We haven't asked Zach to throw the ball too much this afternoon because a lot of guys are doing a lot of running today. And one of the guys that's running is a guy I told you was going to run, and that would be Mr. Hodgman. He gets hit right there. But that's one of the few times they've gotten some clean looks on the second drive of the game, gets down to the one. 
A couple of plays later, completes the 14-play, 83-yard drive. This time it's a nice pass over the top to, to Jalen Kelsey. A couple of plays later, Juking and Javin gets inside the five, and this is just a nice play right there. This is what it looks like to try to tackle him in open field. And right now, Campbell's got all cylinders growing as they're up by, two by a touchdown. But you've got to be able to bounce back. And one thing you know about this Appalachian State team will do, they'll run the ball. Mix in a couple of short passes. Harrington's had a nice game. Wilson, watch Harrington turn the corner, tight ropes to sideline, gets the first touchdown of the afternoon for the Mountaineers. And then the ability to go inside. We didn't expect to see Nate Noel go in the game, but he's had a very nice game. This is a catch. Almost throws a touchdown. You see the second bobble right there. You know, by Arrington, doesn't get the touchdown there. But later on, a missed opportunity, another missed opportunity, nearly picked off. But again, this is why you love Hennigan. His ability to come back and make plays, short yards, goes inside. Harrington from two yards out, caps an 11 play, 51 yard drive just before the half. It gets us to where we are now at 17 13. App State with the momentum, but Campbell on the other side with a nice first half. Let's see what both crews can do as we'll take a break and be back with you for second half action and just kidding we're going to stay right here <laughs> and Stan as you look at the second half for Campbell this is a team that coming into this game an uphill battle an FCS team playing an FBS school it's always going to be that way but they have to be happy with the fact that they're sitting here in a close game at halftime well they only scored nine points in the second quarter they were able to put points on the board they haven't turned the football over. It's a team that, that, you know, has had some big play capabilities. The thing that you concern yourself with now is are you able to match? It's kind of like a basketball game. Are you able to match the scoring? Appalachian's got the lead. They had a very impressive drive and then another drive just before the half. So the momentum is on their side. You've got to ask your defense, if you're a Camel fan, to now come up there and say, guys, hump up. Let's go. We've got to play good defense. Get off the field and let that offense get revved up again. And if you're Appalachian State, you finally saw yourself score in the scoring zone. You took advantage of a couple of defensive plays. You made them. And now, can you put another solid second half together and close this game out and get ready for conference play? Absolutely so. So let's see what this second half has in store as both teams are trotting back out on the field. A sun-soaked day here in Boone, North Carolina as that new turf is really being highlighted by the sunshine up above. No, I'll tell you what, there may not be a lot of fans in the stands here, but there's a lot of atmosphere in this place today. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you can just kind of close your eyes for a second and you can hear the crowd. You can hear them on the rock, 30,000 strong. And, you know, hey, football's here. Absolutely. That's all I know. Football's here. Thank goodness. <laughs> Everybody be safe. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Do what you got to do. But thank you for some football. Yeah, you see there from That's our camera fish. crew some of the looks of the cardboard <laughs> cutouts that are in the stands. So there are fans in the stands here today. Thomas Hennigan, the one that's going to try to return this one off the left side, and Hennigan is chased out of bounds. So now first and 10 for the Mountaineers as their drive is going to start. And let's see if we see a lot, a solid dose again of Harrington. Remember, first half, 18 carries, 107 yards, most this season, obviously, for him as far as carries and yards. And let's just see if he gets, is he one of those running backs that gets stronger as the game goes on, the more carries, the more success he's having. He and Nate Noel with an incredible opportunity here today, and it's Harrington that gets the ball first, and Datrick Harrington. Anytime he gets the ball, he's getting positive yardage, and that has to be something that is a beautiful sight to see for App State fans and this Mountaineer coaching staff. You know, it was really funny as you prepare for the game, you look at some dim intangible things. And, and Campbell had what we call the big three, or Freeman Barr and McDowell running backs. They'd only lost combined eight yards rushing out of a total of 231. Let me tell you more about these running backs for App State in a second. Dietrich Harrington off the right side this time. He's going to get wrapped up. Mountaineers sitting 
In a second and five, and now let's see what the down and distance is. Third and one third here down, for Appstate. Third down short. Appalachian had a lot of success on third down in the first half, four out of seven. But to continue that thought, not counting Thomas as a running back, Peoples, Williams, and Harrington carried the ball 66 times, 374 yards. They only lost eight yards combined. So that lets you know the offensive line is doing a good job and running backs, when they see a crease, they're able to take full advantage of it on both sides. Another handoff going, a bounce off a defender and churning those legs forward is Harrington. Great job by him that time on the initial contact, just keeping the legs moving. Well, he was stopped ahead, initially. He in. was hit two yards behind the line of scrimmage, which would have gone back to our theory about losing yards. But what do you do? You hit second effort you're able to get there get the first down and it's plays like that that not only do coaches love to see but your offensive linemen love to see you're getting off blocks you're continuing to make plays zach thomas with the fake handoff he's looking long that's thomas hennigan that he's trying to reach and some great coverage on the play by campbell The matchup of Great and, and Hennigan is something I wanted to see all afternoon. I mean, Hennigan, you know, obviously has great credentials coming into this. That time, the defensive side, but Malik Great was able to win that battle. But you got to take that shot. So now second and ten for App State. This will be a handoff to Noel. He'll take it off the left side, and a shoestring tackle is going to bring him down. Hey, a big congratulations to Cole Garrison on the App State offensive line. Accepted to the UAB School of Medicine yesterday. Looking to be a surgeon, either in orthopedic, sports medicine, or trauma. Also, a guy that does a lot of volunteering in the community. So someone that you should be proud wears the black and gold, and Cole Garrison's going to continue that legacy at UAB. Fake handoff here for Thomas looking on the left side. And the catch is completed to Thomas Hennigan as that's going to be another first down for the Mountaineers. Third down, eight and nine. You run the stick route. You make sure you've got room to come back. Get the first down yardage and then come back. An outstanding receiver, Hennigan, gets down low, makes himself a target, comes back, keeps those chains moving. Again, Thomas Hennigan already with 10 receptions on this season. The big play touchdown early in the year. You continue to look for big things out of this young man. So the Mountaineers now with a first and 10 on the 45 fake handoff here from Thomas rolls out to the right. And this catch will be completed this time to Eli Wilson. Wilson getting the mitts on the ball and falling down. That little quarterback boot right there, dragged the tight end underneath. And that's a nice play. It gives you about three, four, five yards. This time only picks up about three. But again, it's something you can look at it. It's, it's an intermediate route. You look short, you don't get him. You make it look over the top deep based on coverage. So a second and eight here for the Mountaineers as they get lined up. App State with the lead as the ball is going to be handed off to Daytrick Harrington once again, just sideways moving that body to get a few extra yards. And that's now going to move it to a third and five. So a big play in this game right here, App State. Trying to put some more points up on the board and take their largest lead of this game. Campbell thinking with a stop right here that they might be able to get their offense back out there. It's Harrington off the left side. He's going to have some room, and Dietrich Harrington is going to the house. App State scoring here to begin the second half. And the Mountaineers are just pounding the ball on the ground. Great surge at the offensive line. Caught him in a three-man front. We're trying to roll somebody in the second side. Appalachian recognizes it, and all you got to do is put your foot in the ground, and Harrington does the rest from 40 yards out. So a 23-13 lead for the Mountaineers. That's a 40-yard rushing touchdown for Dietrich Harrington. Nine plays, 70 yards, 401 off the clock for the Mountaineers. And now Chandler Staten will try for the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good. And now it is a 24-13 lead for App State.
Great job coming out at halftime. Put your foot down. Four, four, six Mountaineers in the lead. Well, go ahead and get a nice little massage here, Dietrich Harrington. You deserve it after 23 attempts, 163 yards, and three touchdowns. Finishing it with a 40-yard touchdown run there a moment ago. Dietrich Harrington, a 7.1-yard average here in this game. I'm sure he was excited when he found out he was going to be getting the ball this much in this game. Of course, he wants his teammates to be out there with him, but he is taking advantage of the opportunity. The return here for the Camels, and that's a nice run out that time as that's Malik Great, the redshirt senior defensive back, and that brings it out on the play. You, you talk about those teammates and your stable of running backs. The Appalachian State started a year out, and this is the eight consecutive years where you've had at least one 1,000-yard rusher for the Mountaineers. Great runners, guys that can go inside as well as out, have the speed, you have depth, and a tremendous offensive line, and you wonder why this team has had so much success throughout the years. They've been able to run the football, and you see Harrington having one of those type of games right now. So the Camels offense going back to work as this is going to be incomplete here. Haj Malik Williams trying to get things rolling. He got Kelsey on the slant, but Shamar Jean Charles, watch him get this hand in at the last moment. Great coverage, had good inside leverage, trying to get the quick pass over the top. Defensive coverage, you talk about guys, and we haven't really talked about Jolly a lot today, and Gene Charles and Caden Smith and Ryan Huff, the defensive secondary for Appalachian State, but as good as any you see in college football. Speed as well as being able to hit you. An elite group, and speaking of a hit, this is DeMarco Jackson, last year's leading tackler. That on second and 10 wraps up his man. And now it's going to be third and 10 here for the Camels. Trey, so the App State defense using the offense's energy to bring it on their side as well. Trey Cobb last week had 14 tackles in the loss against Marshall. Followed that with what uh, DeMarco Jackson gets the tackle there. Had eight in that loss. Covering his linebacker spot. He's got the speed. He's like, they, like you say, he's agile and he's hostile and he's mobile. He makes plays. Number 52. Third and 10 here for Campbell. Rolling out to the right is Haj Malik Williams trying to call for a block. And now Jackson chasing him. And he's going to have to go ahead and give up on that play. Malik Williams' eyes were always downfield in the pocket. The area short, got shorter and shorter and shorter. And he had nothing else to do but go three and out, throw the ball away. And so, you know, we talked about how Uncle Mo can get on your side to think about the touchdown just before the half, then the touchdown that Dedrick had just at half. Now, once again, the Appalachian State gets a stop. We'll get the football back in relatively good field position. So now this App State team starting to play with more and more confidence as we've really seen the momentum swing in this one from App State scoring there to end the second quarter. The punt away here from the Camels. That's Hennigan that's back to return it. He catches. Off the hop, and now is going off the left side. Long run here for Thomas Hennigan. Let's see what he can get. A few extra yards across the 50-yard line. And Hennigan with those sure hands. You don't mind him doing that. Anybody else, you might not be too happy with him picking the ball up after those bounces. Thomas Hennigan, Mr. Everything. Go inside, go outside, give you a stiff arm, return punch. Appalachian State, 24-13. App State with a 24-13 lead over Campbell as the offense goes back to work. And the Mountaineers seem to have found that patented rhythm starting on the ground game with that offensive line just punishing the opposition. And then Dietrich Harrington doing the rest of the work. And speaking of, they're going to go back to him. And Harrington with a gain of a few here on first down. Well, when you've had a history of success you know every you think of what linebacker you running back you you know th this is a run based formation formation team 
They run the football. And you've got a coach now, a head coach who was an offensive line coach, was an All-American. You've got guys that are making it to the next level, outstanding running backs. They're just going to pound you. And if you can't stop the run, you're not going to win. On second and nine, Thomas going off to the left, and Hennigan cannot complete the catch that time. So now that'll make it third and nine here for the Mountaineers with 9.03 left in the third quarter. Hard throw to make going, rolling to your left and trying to get those shoulders square. The ball just a little late coming out and just kind of flies a little bit on Hennigan. Hennigan does a little bit of everything. Knocks from the sideline, messes up the chain crew. <laughs> <laughs> really have enjoyed his maturity as a player coming from a freshman. That, that was a spot receiver at times to nail a break. sure all conference possible All-American player. Hennigan looking long. He's going that way, and he has Hennigan. And Thomas Hennigan trying to find some space to get around. They have him by the ankles. Now they're going to throw him down just on the six-yard line. But Thomas Hennigan open in space, and that's going to be trouble for the opposition every time. Excellent protection for Thomas allows Hennigan to really get into the second and third level of the route go starts inside bounces the outside a perfectly thrown ball and a very difficult guy to bring down with the Mountaineers having so many wide receivers out in this game the coaching staff really excited to see all the ways they could get Thomas Hennigan involved and they've been able to and a guy that's up for anything has made some plays in this one this is going to be a fake handoff and a trot into the end zone for Zach Thomas as the Mountaineers put some more points up on the board. And you can rest easy, fans. It looks like the App State offense is back to what you'd expect. And when you have established a run, then you're able to sprinkle in some throws. It makes the defense the outside in the linebacker containment gets a little sketchy you make the fake inside and boom a play they've had some success with throughout the years at Appalachian the quarterback keeper Thomas gets in for his first touchdown of the season so now the Camels thinking about what their response will be as the point after is up and through and that turns this into a 31 13 lead for App State and it seems to have come in the blink of an eye. You play fake inside to, to a guy in Harrington who scored there. Quarterback says, it's easy pickings. I'll give you six. 12 goes in for six. Mountaineers on a roll. Right in corner. Hey, look at all the Mountaineer fans there in the stands. The cardboard cutouts making their debut here in the 2020 season. And a nice little section of black and gold faithful there. Some recognizable faces for the fan base. And now Campbell trying to see what they can do after the Mountaineers have had momentum swing in their direction. And this is the time when the Camels are going to come out and really rely on that quarterback, Haj Malik Williams, and see where he can take them. Because at the end of the day, where Haj Malik Williams brings this Camel team is ultimately where they're going to end up. You know, look at those fans. They look a lot happier now than they did early in the first half of this football <laughs> game. Too. Yeah. Now, now that I look at it, but yeah, Hodge Malik Williams now is just make decisions. Again, let's go back to something we talked about early in the football game. What are you able to do on first down? How are you able to control the line of scrimmage? The last two times that Campbell had the ball deep in their territory, 25 yards or back, they either threw it or they had dive plays that resulted in no yards to make second and third down hard. They go off the field. Get something on first down. Give yourself some room to be able to make a play. It's a fake handoff here. He's going with the arm and over the top. He has an incompletion. For a moment, it looked like that was going to be completed, but it's a nice play there. This ball coverage. just floats just a little bit. Just tails off. You've got a receiver that's there. And, and again, that's Kelsey not able to bring it in, but getting those one on one matchups. The wide receivers for Campbell, especially Jalen Kelsey and, and, and uh, Jai Williams, are speed burners. Cedric Frazier's had a solid season as well. But those are guys you want to try to get them in a man coverage situation and try to put the ball on the money, too. So second and 10 here for the Camels. They fake the handoff. Some pressure coming to Malik Williams, and he's torn down 
getting the ankle, spinning him around, and making sure he stayed that way for the Mountaineers was Jalen McClaw, the linebacker. Yeah, Jalen McClaw does a great job getting a sack. But what we say it goes back. First down, you get nothing. Second down, long running situation. Quarterback Williams is being pressured, can't get out of it. McLeod, the kid from Maryland, gets the sack, and now you're in third and nearly impossible for Campbell. So third and 20 here for the Camels. And they're gonna go back to the ground game and Barr is slowed down before he can even get those legs really churning. And the Mountaineers defense has made some adjustments and come out and had some very nice plays after some early runs were going for long distances for the Camels. Man, extra man in the box and also taking away options for Haj Malik Williams. Remember, this is the third possession that they've had when they've gone three and out. And you'll get good field position once again, relatively speaking, if you're Appalachian. You take advantage of that. It's amazing how a couple defensive plays, a stop, a big catch can change the momentum of a football game. Fourth and 11, they'll punt away, and Hennigan's going to call for the fair catch this time. First one, he hasn't had to catch off the bounce. So now we're going to see the Mountaineer offense go back to work, and... These teams have actually played a few times before. The third meeting all time. Mountaineers lead 2-0, 20 to 6 they won back in 1931. And a 66-0 victory in 2014. That was the Mountaineers just second game as an FBS program and the fourth biggest margin of victory. So they call an illegal shift there. And that's going to result in... It's going to play five yards from the yeah. end of the play. So a little boost there for the App State offense. This game was added to the schedule on August 13th. Originally, this was supposed to be a matchup between the Mountaineers and UMass. And just saw UMass is going to uh, pick up their schedule at uh, the end of uh, October, I think. So that's encouraging and getting teams back out on the field. Definitely Pac-12, so. Pac-10. Dietrich Harrington spun around. He's going to run off the right side now. What can't he do? Harrington running a long ways for a little bit of yardage, but do believe that he was able to at least run for no gain. And actually, no, it's going to be a loss of three as Harrington escaped that first tackle. Brevin Allen does a great job in getting it. Can't bring the tackle down, but then reverses feeling. If you get one more block to the outside, you kind of get the feeling a storytale game goes on for, for Mr. Dietrich Harrington. Big tackle in the open field by Levi Wiggins. So second and 13 here for the Mountaineers. Noel back in the game. Thomas not looking to run it. Instead, he's going to go to the outside. Deshaun Davis with the catch. The churn up field. They have him by the jersey. And Davis running out with a big bit of motivation towards the Mountaineer sidelines. Those fists pumping and the arms rushing in the air. First and 10 here for App State as they're now across midfield on the 45-yard line. Going back to the ground, Noel off the right side this time. He gets some space, has some open room along the side, and is thrown out of bounds. One thing you've got to do if you're an if you're app receiver or tight end is block, and you know it's a good job by Wilson, 87. Gets, watch, watch 87 leading the way. Bam, block right there. Gets another block inside by number 60. That's Hannon. We've talked a lot about him. And then you give a guy that's getting a chance to play and has some success, makes another big play. Back to Noel. Bangs into a defender and is thrown out of bounds and a late flag is going to come in. The App State coaching staff was so excited about seeing Nate Noel get the opportunity in this game. A guy that they believed if he wouldn't have had some issues during camp would have been out there to begin the season. Darren Slade comes in late. Good block there by Hennigan. Watch Slade at the end. Had a nice first half with seven tackles. That time, late and unnecessary. 
So now a first and five for the Mountaineers with the ball on the five yard line. And they're gonna keep Noel in the game. Maybe looking for his first career touchdown here. Wilson comes over to the side of Thomas. They go on the ground. Noel rushing ahead. He reaches for the end zone. And congratulations, Nate Noel. You're now in App State lore. With the Mountaineers down 20 players, both running backs getting things going here in Boone. We'll talk about it and talk about it and talk more. Great job at the point of attack by the offensive line of Appalachian State. You bring that tight end over. As a wham blocker, he kicks out that defensive end, gives you a gap inside, and Noel goes in, gets his first touchdown in school history. That's what you like. You like to say school history, half <laughs> history. Get a touchdown, point after is good. Mountaineers are on a roll. And a point after good, and now App State up 38-13. Watch this block there, finds a hole, goes inside. Everybody's engaged. The offensive lineman with a defensive front of Campbell. Campbell moves that front around. Three men, sometimes four. Recognizes he gets a hat on the hat. Does a great job. Noel lowers his head, gets in, finds per date, pay dirt, and everyone, I mean everyone, happy for the young player. So you talk about opportunity in this game. That's the thing that we heard from the App State coaching staff. There were going to be a lot of guys that got opportunities that maybe otherwise wouldn't have, and they are taking advantage as you see some folks lined up along the fence there trying to get a look at the field. The Mountaineer faithful doing anything they can to get a look inside this stadium on a Saturday, and hopefully in the Mountaineers' next home matchup, and across college football for that matter, there will be a lot more folks in the stands as everybody tries to keep everyone safe and healthy and still have them be able to enjoy what we all love in football. That was a five play 56 yard drive for the Mountaineers. A minute 50 off the play clock as the booming kick goes away. And there's going to be a flag as that went out of bounds. This ball will be placed down at the... He placed 35, which has been the best field position that Campbell has had in the second half and in the latter parts of the of the first half. So now with a little better field position, let's see if they try to try to get the ball in the air or continue what gave them some success early, which was Mr. Williams running the ball. Williams with the handoff here on first down. Barr trying to find some room and App State's gonna bring him down a few steps short of that first down marker. You, you like Bryant Barr, maybe probably a better receiver than the other two running backs that they use right now but very quick has got some strength can bounce to the outside and took what looked like maybe a two yard pickup to about a seven or eight yard pickup second and four here for the camels as originally Williams called for the snap then looks over at the sideline he gets the ball now he's going to hand it off to bar and that is stopped before anything can get rolling 2020, just the 13th season of FCS football for the Camels. Brought it back to the creek in 2008 after a 58-year hiatus. A member of the Pioneer Football League from 2008 to 2017. They previously had a team back in the junior college days from 1925 to 1950 and took a hiatus from 1940 to 1945 during World War II. This is just the third Full scholarship season for the Camels already way ahead of schedule is Mike Minner and his staff. Off to the right side, here goes Williams, and he's chased out of bounds trying to reach for that first down marker on third and three. He got that very, very close. Got the first down, line of game was a 45. But you look at what you're talking about. This is a program that's now in, in a very, very competitive, competitive conference facilities absolutely fantastic stadium seats about five six thousand got a good fan base 
and, and you're going to hear a lot out of the Campbell Camels in the future of college football. Williams going right up the gut, and he has a man waiting right there as that'll be close to another first down. And believe, in fact, that it's going to be. Nice timing to pocket that time. And again, when you can get Williams to stand there, get his feet set, he delivers a very nice and catchable ball. Jalen Kelsey that time with the catch for 10 yards and a pickup of first. Williams going back to the ground here. Barr with some space off the right side after he got his arm away from an App State defender. And once again, close to another first down here, as that's going to make it second and four. You know, this, this Campbell team in the preseason polls picked number four in the conference, but had about eight guys that were first or second team all conference, Big South performers. And so with them playing the four games, they'll play Wake Forest next week. Then they'll sit back and then get ready, bigger, faster, stronger. And one thing that you've heard a lot out of Mike Minner in the camp down in Campbell, that they're getting ready to play for championships. The fake handoff here, Williams fading back. Now he's going to run forward and is brought down on the play by a Mountaineer as App State had players all around the area. And the one that eventually gets to him will be Tristan Walliser. You ask yourself why is he not able to get that because great coverage in the secondary. No receivers were open. They were covered short. They were covered on the deeper than deep. As you take a look at that Campbell schedule, boy, just a point away, one play away from knocking off Georgia Southern. The Coastal Carolina game got crazy in. Today you're here and then next week up at Wake Forest. A fake handoff here off the left side is Williams. And he'll push the body forward to get a few more yards there on third and four. Another first down for the Camels. And Mike Minner was not forced to play the four FBS games. That's something that he wanted to do. He believes his team is capable of going up against anybody and believing that they can win going into the game and that his guys also, if they do lose, have the right mentality to take out of it what they should and bring that confidence moving forward. And he also wanted them to see the national TV stage, which they did in well, the first fortunate. two games. Yeah, they got fortunate with yeah. that by being those games picked up. But that is part of the whole spectrum of learning how to build a program and get the culture. And you're amazed at how many people now know Campbell football, and you're going to know these running backs as well. Bam! Great hit there <laughs> on the outside. As he's letting him know about it is Stephen Jones afterwards. And Stephen Jones and C.J. Freeman are now fast friends. And Freeman, not the worst for the wear on the sideline. Take a look at this. Get to the outside. Watch Jones come, 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 come. Bam. He immediately grabs that leg. And I do not like the way he's grabbing that. So hopefully that's going to work out for C.J. Freeman. Yeah, checking on him over there along the sideline as this will give both teams an opportunity to go ahead and discuss things. While we have the chance, though, let's go ahead and tell you a little bit more about, about Mike Menner. Of course, we were talking about at the start of this broadcast, the former Carolina Panther, the former Nebraska great. But as far as a head coach goes, Mike Menner had great success at the high school level, won two state championships in three years, and then he decided, all right, I don't necessarily want to go and be an assistant coach. I want to get right into my head coaching career. Well, so he went to Bowie's Creek. He said, hey, this is the job that I want. And ever since he's taken that opportunity, it's been just a match made in heaven for him and the Campbell uh, University crew as well. And both of them have been really happy with what's come out of it and the folks in Bowie's Creek have to be happy with what they've seen over the years. Well, you know, he, a very illustrious NFL career and college career, which, you know, we talked about and everybody always leads with, which you should. But uh, got his start at high school, won the state championship, like you said, was at Johnson C. Smith for a year, then went up to Liberty for a couple of years and then kind of said, like you said, I want to be a head coach. I got an opportunity. Let me go somewhere where, where they need to build. And the thing, that, the thing that impresses me the most about Mike, and I've, I've had the pleasure of knowing him for a while, is that this is not like, okay, I'm trying to be here, get my name out, my name, I'm on TV, boom, national TV, then I'm ready to look for the next job. He's there to build a program. And, and if you look, if you just kind of close your eyes for a second, Campbell and Appalachian mirror each other a lot of ways. Solid coaches, have football experience, great fan support, 
offensive line. They're building it in the trenches. I like what they're doing down in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. You're exactly right. As you took a look at here, if Freeman go off the field, hopefully he'll be okay. That's yeah. never good. No, it's not. They're going to take a look at him and hopefully get him back to full health. Off the left side, throwing over the top. This ball's bobbled and knocked away. Great coverage there by the Mountaineers. As we see over on the other side of the field, it looks like that's the Campbell defense that's getting talked to right now, trying to figure things out. But that's a play where you've got to put something on that football. There's just a little bit of a window of opportunity for Julian Hill, and then coverage comes and makes a good play. But that's, again, part of the maturity process that you're seeing out of, out of Malik Williams. When to throw the ball, when to put some juice on it, when to float it. Got to put some juice on that one. Third and one here for the Camels. And the Mountaineers immediately to him, but believe that's going to be a first down for Campbell, and indeed it will. And what I was speaking about a moment ago, the entire Campbell defense is over on the other side of the field on their sideline, all of them either down on the bench or kneeled down, having a discussion right here with their coaches for when App State goes back out there on offense. We got just six seconds left here in the end of this quarter. And let's see whether or not we see Williams try to get the snap off. He does, fakes the handoff. He's running off the right side. Can't get to him that time, and he'll step out of bounds. And that's going to end the third quarter. The Mountaineers with a very successful quarter, 21 points. They lead 38-13. Shot up on the video board right now. The App State cheerleaders all on Zoom. They're cheering on the Mountaineers. App State with the 38-13 lead here as we enter the fourth quarter. Haj Malik Williams, the sophomore quarterback, true sophomore, throws out to the right and has his man thrown down on the play by Stephen Jones. Is Jai Williams, the transfer from Coastal Carolina. Love that concept that time. They started the wheel route to the top, or the bottom of the screen for Bryant Barr, and then you send Jai Williams. Again, you want to get the ball in his hands any way possible with the speed underneath. Nice little concept. Nice play. Gets you another first down. First and six here for the Camels. Looking for their first point since halftime. Barr is shut down here as he was looking for some yardage. They'll bring in Barr. They'll use Barr sometime. They'll use McDowell, the freshman, who comes in with a lot of great stats. Kid out of Gastonia, and he's a power runner inside. I think they got him in the game now, number 24. So second and five here for the Camels. The handoff does indeed go to him, but App State there and ready, as that was Caden Smith that came up and made the tackle, one of the ones that Dale Jones highlighted on this App State defense. He said... There's a lot of guys on this defense that played a little bit last year, but not a ton, and they've stepped up big time in their new roles. This App State defense ranking number one nationally in completion rate, allowing just 40% coming into this game. Yeah, but you don't think they're going to throw the ball here in this short third down, do you? Third and go, you think? We'll see. Third and four. You got a, you got man at the bottom. You got a man beater play. You send a guy underneath, I guess it will. There he is right there. Williams looking, still looking. He has his guy, and they're going to say incomplete on the play. Some discussion here afterwards. A few camels still throwing up the touchdown sign. Did he catch it? Did he? If he caught it in the end zone, in the feet there, I don't know if he broke the plane. Yeah, I don't think he broke let's the plane let's even take if he a caught look it. Again. Well, looks like he caught it between his knees. And that was the man beater to send the back after he recognizes underneath. Go about five yards and just turn around. So nice call, just wasn't able to get that. So we got fourth down and goal. Here we go. Playing for some pride if you're on the defensive side. Fourth and four, Williams has the play blown dead.
Yeah. So they're going to take a look back at that one and see whether or not he got in. And let's go ahead and give you a look you haven't seen yet. See, if he maintained possession, you can't see the football. It looks like, see, it's between his knees right there. See, if he maintains possession, it's got to be it's a touchdown because the ball broke the plane when he, where he was catching it. Now, does, here's another question I'll ask you. As that ball was being wedged between his knees, does the, does the ball hit the ground? Does the nose of the football touch the turf? And that's why they have the replay material and the people down there to tell us the answer. And I will sit back and tell you what happened. Let's take one more look at this. I, you know what? I think that's a touchdown. Bryant Ball. Well, if it is, then that's one of the more unique touchdown catches that you'll see. They tell you to use the whole body, and he definitely did that time. Well, my, my, my other question would be, were his hands under, hands under the button? Okay. Okay. See, if the umpire was moved, we could tell you. I guess they're saying he doesn't have enough to overturn this call. Turn. Right there. Got him. Wow. The umpire's on top of the play. So we go. We move on. And now we sit with a fourth and four. An empty set here for Williams. Williams throwing in the end zone, and the catch cannot be completed as that is Caden Smith that came in and made sure there wouldn't be a touchdown there for the Camels. So Kate possession Smith goes has back a, to App State. Caden Smith has had a heck of a football game. Been involved in seven or eight tackles a day, a couple of deflections. That's a hard play to defend, to get inside the defender when the offensive player on that little short slant does a great job getting his hand there and, and stopping Campbell from a sure touchdown. And that's a big boost for the App State defense. You have a pretty nice lead right now, 38-13. But you never know what can happen during the course of a game, and it always makes those guys smile on Mondays after they know they've had a great game and didn't allow any points in the second half. That's what they're trying to do right now. Well, you're playing for a lot of pride on the defensive side. You don't want to give up points. Campbell had a great opportunity to score, not able to get in there. And so you go back tonight and you look at tape and you say, wow, great effort. Everybody followed technique. You did what you had to do to stop them. Now what you'd like to do if you're Appalachian is a nice five, six, seven minute drive. Score and you start icing down. That's definitely what this team's famous for. And that's what that offensive line loves is when you tell them, hey, it's going to be run after run after run. Let's see what the plan is here. It's a handoff to Harrington, and Harrington is just gashing this defense for Campbell as he gets some more yardage and now is going to be up over 170. Came into this ball game with 27 carries for 90 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Had a touchdown, had two touchdowns and over 100 yards before halftime and is on his way to having a very, very successful football afternoon. Another first and 10 here for the Mountaineers. Another handoff to Datrick Harrington. And another nice gain there on first down. Datrick Harrington, a junior for the Mountaineers, has had an interesting career due to injuries. He tore his ACL in spring practice. He also appeared in just two games in redshirt in one year. And then eight games last year coming back from the injury. But then he missed six games with a lower body injury. So he's never really been able to be on the field as much as he'd like. And here in this one, having the great opportunity to be the Mountaineers' primary back. And boy, is he taking advantage. 
And off here to Noel. The Mountaineers just rushing up the gut in that offensive line, making them look smart for doing so. And Noel, going into the start of this quarter, had 88 yards himself running the football on 11 carries. So he's close, getting closer and closer to the elusive 100-yard mark. And that would be great for a guy that really didn't think he would get much playing time as this week started. But everybody's got to be ready when your opportunity comes, and when it comes, do the very best you can. Noel's had a solid ball game today. Yeah, he's sitting with 12 attempts for 97 yards. I know that looks like a flag down on the field, but I guess it's a towel instead as Noel's ahead a few more. And wow, in his first game with the Mountaineers, and take that back, there is a flag on the field. I think that's going to be something to happen during the pile just by the reaction of some of the offensive line. Ryan Newsom was very excited about what was going on. But again, did you see the power that time by the young kid? Known for speed out of Miami, Florida, showing some power in between the tackles. So much going on in the pile. Ray Miller, outstanding linebacker for the Campbell Camels. It's a blow to the head, but did not exceed the level of a flagrant foul. So, hey, just kind of love tap, let you know he was there. That's a great seat. Well, how much those seats? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to know. Hey, aren't you supposed to be working? <laughs> That's a great view. This, this man. It's going to be nice. It's going to be really nice here when everything is finished. It is, and we'll get you the numbers on just how spectacular it'll be here in a moment as Thomas hands it back off to Noel. And Noel getting some room, maybe getting away from a tackler. He stumbles ahead, and Nate Noel with another big run. Wow, that's going to put him over 120 yards here in his first game with a touchdown. Vision, Unbelievable. Vision, balance and then power. And then when you're hit, being able to break a tackle and get to the second level, you're seeing it all out of the freshman from Miami, Florida. The true freshman taking advantage of his opportunity as now Dietrich Harrington's back in, 131 yards and a touchdown in his Mountaineer debut. Man, is that exciting for that young man. It's gonna be Jacob Huseman. Actually, no, that's still Zach Thomas out there. A handoff off the right side. Harrington looking for the end zone again, and he's going to be close to the first down marker, pushed out of bounds at about the five. We talked about it early in the ball game. The defensive backs for Campbell have some closing speed, but there was a great example that time of watching Harrington just turn the corner and no one able in the secondary to lay a hand on him. He only goes out of bounds is what stops that play. You've got some guys like Jonathan Jones or C.J. Smith that are good guys that come up and come up and make a big stick, not able to get a hand on the quick and speedy Dietrich Harrington. Would you say 175 now? He is sitting with 194. My bad. Missed a couple yards there. And three touchdowns. And now go ahead and make it four touchdowns. What a day for Dietrich Harrington, a player that's worked so hard in his career to have opportunities like this. And if opportunity is the key word of the day for the Mountaineers, then you can go ahead and say that they've taken advantage of every single one. And they're staying out there for App State to try the point after. And this is up and through, and the Mountaineers now have a 45 to 13 lead. Four touchdown afternoon. You've done it high, you've done it low, going right up the middle. Great job blocking, point of attack, offensive lineman. But it's today, it's Mr. Harrington's day. He's wearing the number four for four touchdowns.
A touchback here with nine minutes and 10 seconds left in this one. And you see the folks over there with the best seat in the house. Finding a way to watch this game. You see the pup there in the background. And you know their tickets were free. That's what's good about it. I'm not, I'm not just saying it's not bad seats, because I like the seats that the, that the construction guy had. That was a nice seat, <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah. But, you know, those seats are good, too, because they're free. <laughs> Can never go wrong Can with that. Can never go wrong with free. So the drive starts here for Campbell, and they're going to go ahead and blow it dead. believe that's going to be on App State, but we'll see here in a moment. So what you want to do if you're Campbell this final nine minutes and 10 seconds is pretend that the game is 13 13 they're 45 45 you want to execute you're trying to get good plays on tape you're trying to do a lot of teaching you want to continue to be physical. And not have mental lapses don't. Don't get sloppy because on the scoreboard, the game has gotten away from you. Every possession, every play means something. It sure does, especially for a program that's this young in their scholarship and a program also that's looking to do big things if they can play a full schedule in the spring. It'll be a handoff here at a bar. And that is closed off by the Mountaineers. We mentioned earlier about the renovations here at Kid Brewer Stadium. Just a quick run through. A $50 million north end zone facility. They removed the track, installed the new turf. So a completely new look here in 2020. Also some plans to honor Hall of Fame coach Jerry Moore with a plaza and a statue with his name on it outside the new facility. And the facility is going to have a new football locker room, weight room, offices team area, a thousand club level seats, a lot of exciting stuff as Kid Brewer Stadium just becomes a nicer and nicer stadium and the Mountaineers see the fruits of their labor with what they're doing out there on the gridiron. An incomplete pass here is gonna make it third and 14 for the Camels. Let's see what we've learned out of this third down long situation. They've tried to use slant routes quick. Three by one set, one back. Now he's in motion. So this is the empty backfield. And, and you think run, you think quick, quick release. It's going to be a run. Okay, and go. App State makes sure that it won't be a run for long. The defense for the Mountaineers and Dale Jones, the coordinator, have really pumped things up here in this second half as Campbell has not scored a point, and I'd venture to guess they don't have too many yards. Tanner Ellenberger that time on the tackle of the plays, first tackle of the year. But again, just you're looking at keys, you're looking at down and distance, third and an obvious long, empty backfield. And what is one of the things that they've had a lot of success with has been running the football throughout the last couple ball games. With Campbell recognized it, did a great job keeping him in and throwing him for a couple yard loss. Thomas Hennigan back to return the punt. And he'll do so as he hops around, moves the legs forward, and is thrown down at about the 45-yard line. We got a little over seven minutes and 30 seconds left. App State leading big here in Boone. Back here in Boone, what a beautiful day to spend a Saturday out on the hill watching your favorite football team. And the Mountaineers have given them a lot to be excited about. Normally they pack about 30,000 to 35,000 inside this stadium. Today I'd say well, maybe there's about 100 outside the stadium. And we know that all of you out there that are joining us along ESPN Plus are thrilled with what you're seeing if you're a Mountaineer fan and just happy about the way that your program's moving along if you're a Campbell fan. A lot to be excited about here this season. I mean, just kind of as is, being excited about the fact that you're playing four FBS teams, that your program's getting some national TV attention, and that your players are willing to go out there and play those tough matchups and 
try to hand the positives out of that to hopefully chase a Big South championship whenever that might come. Well, this was a big attitude game for both teams. And if you're Appalachian State, you wanted to bounce back from the bitter defeat last Saturday at Marshall. And if you were Campbell, it was a continued progression. Jacob Huseman in the game, a quarterback now. And, and what you want to do is what we said a moment ago for uh, Campbell offensively. You want to execute. These are some guys that may not get as much run as normal. And a hand goes there for an outstanding historic performance by Mr. Harrington. What do you got, one, 204? Uh, 200 solid. Solid 200. The touchdown put him over 200. You'll remember this day. <laughs> he certainly will. So now you just kind of run the football, get some guys in, get some, get some guys on tape trying to make some plays, and again, trying to get better. You've got a couple of days off. Hopefully everybody will get through what they've got. Crowds, everybody's happy. Hey, we see you. We love you, too. <laughs> and then you get ready for your first conference game against the Raging Cajuns, which at last view were in top 25 football team, had a great win at Iowa State a couple of weeks ago, and will be a typical Sun Belt battle. The handoff here to another new running back for the Mountaineers, as that time that's going to be... Anderson Castle that's out there. Local guy. linebacker. Yeah, How about that? Local guy. Castle, a freshman from Boone. Went to Watauga High School. Six foot, 200 pounds. Prior to him, just a moment ago, that was Ben Williams that got the rush. Redshirt freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. 5'10", 185. Mountaineers with a first and 10 situation right here. As Huseman has the handoff once again. And Castle churning the legs forward. Got to wonder how many times Castle attended Appalachian State games growing up here. The dream of scoring, getting his getting his name in the end zone, you know, getting across the App State logo for touchdown. Was running hard that time. See if he can get in the end zone in his final five and a half minutes. Ben Williams back out there in the tailback position. Old fashioned high formation lead back. And the Mountaineers keep it on the ground as Williams flies in the air and moves forward for a few extra yards. And now, actually, Campbell is coming out and saying that they have the football. And that is going to be a fumble recovered by the Camels. Keep fighting. It's what you've got to do. Value the football. Turn the tides one more time. Ball's loose. Comes out there. Big hit. Camels fall on it. They've got the ball. Well, no surprise here. They're reviewing that last play, so still some discussion going on as they take a look back and try to figure out exactly what the ruling's going to be. And let's see whether or not we can get another angle on that play as now Kyle Olsen's going to come out and let us know the result. Okay. All right. And that's why we had review. Was his knee was his knee down? Was his arm down? Knee play there. You see that when he had the ball was in his in his right arm. The ball the ground can't cause a fumble. CJ Smith won't be happy with that. He got his first fumble recovery, but now it's taken off. It's a good call by the officials. When that forearm with the ball hit the ground, play was in essence dead. It was dead. So Castle back in at running back as Huseman's still in the game. Jacob Huseman, 6'3", 205-pound senior from Bradenton, Florida. And now awaiting the chance to get things back underway. The handoff here to Castle. He runs it off the left side. A slam into that defensive line of Campbell. And still striding those feet along, he's going to be thrown down. Castle smells that end zone. <laughs> <laughs> he's dreaming of it. 
especially as a true freshman. So first and goal here for App State. Eight yards to go to reach pay dirt once again. Mountaineers in no big hurry. Run the play clock down 20 seconds. They'll just run it down, take their time, maybe start to play about five, six seconds. Not trying to run it up, just trying to execute. Giving some guys an opportunity to play. See if you can push one more in. Defense needs to make a stop. Another handoff here to Castle. And he is wrapped up from behind that time as going and getting him was Jordan Goko, the redshirt sophomore. You know, you talk about this Campbell team and what they're trying to build. And most of the names that we've called predominantly this afternoon, offensively as well as defense, are young guys. And with the NCAA ruling due to, to the COVID breakout, guys are going to get this season back. So you, 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 you can understand, if you really are paying attention, what this program is building. They're going to they're going to beat a lot of people in the years to come. Huseman fakes the handoff. Now he's running off the left side and nobody's going to get to him. Jacob Huseman with a rushing touchdown as the Mountaineers tack on some more points. He's had one decision to make. Do I take it to the outside or I take it to the inside with the one block? He goes inside, reads the block, bam, gets a touchdown on the board. That's the fifth career touchdown for Huseman. Has to be exciting to go ahead and get one of those in his senior season. And now Staten back out there for the extra point try as the Mountaineers have put up 51 points in this game. It's hard to believe that the scoring took a while to get started in this one as the point after is good and now make it 52. And also that we went into halftime with the Mountaineers having that 17-13 lead. They have taken advantage of the Watch second Huseman. half. Watch Huseman, there's the fake, everybody's influenced right. And he just gets the little block to the outside. If that blocker goes inside, then he'll bounce to the outside. That's a good job. Where's the fake? Hides the ball, sees the pay dirt. He's got one guy, not in really in theory to beat. Just gotta make sure he avoids, gets in. And the Mountaineers are once again on the scoreboard on this nice Saturday afternoon in Boone. So we have three minutes and 19 seconds left here with you. As App State will send the ball the way of the Camels. And we'll see what Campbell can do on offense. And now, Stan, the stadium isn't looking too strange anymore. This is about what we'd see if the Mountaineers <laughs> had a lead this I, I didn't know where you were going with that. I said, let me, let me kind of wait on that. Okay. A lot of the black and gold faithful <laughs> stay until the very end, but there are some folks that want to go ahead and hop in the cars. We start back down 12 o'clock kick allows you the opportunity to start the, the post game tailgating. That's right. A little sooner. So, you know, hey, but uh, it's a beautiful afternoon for football. Like I said, we hope that uh, people everywhere are safe and enjoying. Absolutely. Some normalcy in this crazy world. Rushing ahead here and being thrown down on the play. That's a great tackle by the Mountaineers. Great special teams play. When we talked to Coach Menner, we asked him, what were the reasons that you wanted to play here during the fall? Again, if you weren't with us at the top, Campbell, one of just 17 teams in the FCS that's still playing. As you take a look back at this replay and see the nice form tackle there. He said, number one recruiting. He said number two, having the footprint in North Carolina and nationally, and he wanted his guys to understand what it was like to play in the national spotlight. Thought it was going to be so good for them moving forward. And you talk about games where there's really nothing, nothing to lose in these circumstances, everything to gain, and that's kind of what you sit with with this situation with Campbell. And now off to the races is one of the Camels as sneaking in a play that time. And it looks like it's two new players on the field. Is that height that just ran in for the touchdown? It is. Wow, a new quarterback in the game and a touchdown for Campbell. 
as the Camels go ahead and put some more points on the board. And how about that for height? We thought he was injured earlier, and now he has a long touchdown Just a nice run. play. I mean, at the end of the game, get execute. You come in, you get one pass, a little slant. Everybody's kind of relaxed. You go about 85 yards for a touchdown. Like you said, this is, this is what these games are all about, continuing to play to the end of the the end of the whistle, to the end of the ball game. We had seen a very conservative offense from the Camels here recently, but there was nothing conservative about that. An 87-yard catch and run to the end zone. Just a little quick hitter. Nothing more, nothing less. Soft corner, no corner. Catch it, and then hopefully you don't get caught. Hopefully you don't run out of gas trying to get in the end zone. And that goes down in the highlight. Almost, almost. It had been five more yards. Height might not have made it. <laughs> Try telling them that. That's a great play, especially after being injured earlier in the football game. From throwing his helmet in frustration of the fact that he thought he was injured, to running it in the end zone for 87 yards. The day and the mindset has certainly changed for Austin Height. Redshirt senior wideout, 6'2", 200 from Goldsboro, North Carolina. As Stan told you earlier, a transfer from Monmouth College. Monmouth conference member of Big South. Here we go. Wiley Two Hartley. By T. Wiley Hartley, the quarterback in the game right now for the Camels. He fakes, and now he's going to run it in. And the two-point conversion, good as well for Campbell. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Here's why you play college football, for all the emotion. You were down, but you got something to talk about. And Hartley says, period. That's who I am. Hit me. And just say, look, you're going to have to do better than that to bring me down. <laughs> a touchdown pass and a two-point conversion. Wally Hartley is my name. <laughs> well, he is 6'3", 190 pounds from Atlanta, Georgia. And now he has a touchdown with the Camels. Wiley Hartley looking pretty good on the stat sheet. One of one, 87 yards, a touchdown. He has a 1,160.8 passer rating. I'd say that's pretty solid. So 52-21, as we'll see the Camels go back out there for special teams. And it looks like we're going to see an onside kick here from the Camels. So let's see how this plays out. The Mountaineers hands team out there. Let's see if, if App State can do a little better on theirs than, than the Falcons did the other day. Oh, that's a sore subject for a lot of people. Hopefully nobody listening. <laughs> hey, hey, truth hurts. Here we go. They did. bounced right over to Thomas Hennigan, and now Hennigan rushing along the side. And on the side of the field he wants to be on, Thomas Hennigan's <laughs> rolled over. I've seen a couple of times where that ball's bounced up, especially until the rules have been adapted. The guy caught it on the second line and, boom, took it right to the house for a 50, 45, 50-yard 50 touchdown. But uh, the thing you have to remember, and, you know, we was forgotten that it's a live ball. Has to go 10 yards by the offense, but at any time in that 10 yards or any other time, once the ball is kicked, you can recover the ball as an offensive player, not the kicker. And that's kind of how they went asleep the other day. And again, it's a good, it's sad that he lost a game like that, but it's a teaching point that, you know, again, just have to be aware of certain rules and certain things. You dive, here you go. End off here to <laughs> Castle. He flies in the air and then rolls on the back. And Castle now sitting with five attempts for 25 yards. Every App State running back that's run it in this one 
Has a fantastic average, and that's what you'd expect when you rush for 388 yards. And if you look at those numbers even closer, you'll probably see that they only have maybe total 15 yards of negative yards this afternoon. How about that App State that offensive many, I look line. at the final stats to be sacked, but you've done a really good job advancing the football, and when you're hit behind the line of scrimmage, trying to squeeze like that, extra effort to pick up with one or two yards. Sean Clark, the Mountaineer head coach and offensive lineman himself. That's the group that he's coached for a large portion of his coaching career. And that veteran group has certainly shown up here today and led this team to victory. Incredibly impressive under the circumstances. The way the Mountaineers dealt with adversity. There might have been some schools that would have said, hey, we have too many players out. We're not going to play this one. But the Mountaineers, despite having 20 players out of this contest, said we have enough to go out there and be successful. You know, you got to look at who you got to be who you are. And they were not happy with the fact of not only obviously losing the football game last week, but not being able to do the one thing that you know they do well, run the football, held to less than 100 yards rushing against a very good Marshall team. So you knew they were going to go back to basics. Are you, are you depleted? In depth today, yes, you are. But this gives other guys an opportunity to play. And certainly they've come out and done it. And what this does is going to, if everybody gets healthy, it builds competition. Now you've got another back that you can put into the possible offensive fold when some guys get well. But a great job of offensive execution by Appalachian State. And I've been impressed also by Campbell, especially early. They kind of wore down just before halftime and then, early in the third quarter and, and they couldn't stop the wave but this again and you can't you know you're not trying to just blow smoke this is a good football team it'll get better but this is an excellent football team and can't wait to see them now as they take on full you know conference play the Mountaineers back in the win column after 15 more seconds ticks off as both crews will walk out to midfield and have their end of game handshakes Congratulations, good games, and both coaches will get a chance to talk here in this one. The cheerleaders up on the video board, happy to cheer for an App State victory, 52-21. Appalachian State now moves to 2-1 on the season. Campbell falling to 0-3, but the Camels again with really tough competition. And you see the upcoming schedule for App State, a humongous matchup against Louisiana coming up next. And that's what you would expect to be a ranked Louisiana team. And then the rival Georgia Southern, Arkansas State, ULM, and Texas State will continue the conference schedule for the Mountaineers. So Appalachian State comes into Boone. They have 20 players out, but it doesn't matter. They walk away with the victory here in this one. A great effort from the Camels, a lot to build on. And so for Stan Luter, I'm Harrison Battle saying so long from Boone, North Carolina, where the final score is 52-21 App State. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. And this has been a presentation of ESPN.